Welcome back to D&D in the World of Terra. Tonight with me, as usual, is Bobby playing Grim the Cleric. Hello. We've got Madrax played by George. Howdy. We've got Shay the Warlock played by Lex. Hi all. I'm Jason, or Architect, your DM for the evening. Unfortunately, we are um, without Adam tonight. Um, he is uh, helping some of the uh, gaming brothers of his uh, through a trying time. So we wish him and them the best. Also, a special shout out to our fans in Rochester, New York, just in case you listen to this one and not the other one. Rochester! Where we already gave you a little bit of shout out. Previously on D&D, the party explored Grenzmott, a small Altaran town a couple days north of the border. Uh, sorry, north of Baytown, just over the border, into Altara. They discovered a wacky cast of characters and shopkeepers in this unique little place. Fen squirreled himself away in his room to uh, essentially learn Dwarvish. The party went from shop to shop looking for various adventuring paraphernalia and ended up with nothing and no money spent. And we... Ended the session with them entering a dingy dark bar in the corner of the town, right under the shadow of the wall. And the bar has the sign of a tankard of ale leaking some green liquid Ew. and the snake just peeking out of it. And that's where we will pick up tonight. As you enter the bar, you find yourself surprised at how dark it is inside, quite unlike Tessa's and even unlike the Half Harbor's um, Repose and the Brass and Barley in Baytown. The inside is filled with a musky scent of people and stale ale, smoke, spills. Not the kind of place you would want to spend any real time for a nice evening of relaxing uh, in the finer comforts of, of tavern life. The crowd in here is a little bit heavy for such... Uh, an hour of the day, you see that um, most of the denizens or the patrons are um, encased in some sort of cloak or a hood of sorts, kind of keeping to themselves or in small hushed tones at, in their groups. As the door opens and casts light into them, you see some of them kind of look and squint and then go back to whatever they were doing. A few candles here and there illuminate uh, pockets of the place, but mostly you think that this place survives on the warmth of huddled masses, yearning to drink freely of those who would for sure not come here. A solitary bartender, kind of grungy human, um, with a pot belly barely contained by his stained tunic, is just slowly wiping down glasses using the age-old method of the spit and shine. Is there any obvious reason why this place is so full this time of day? No. Just a lot of people in it. Uh, does it appear to, to serve food? You do not see food anywhere. Or steak. Okay. Well, we're looking for food. If this place doesn't have any, should we just go? Yes. Let's, well, Let's go back to that other place where there was really good food. Uh, be before we leave, I am going to approach the barkeep. <laughs> he kind of just, like, half nods at you with some sort of guttural form of what do you want and what are you doing here? Hi, my name is Majax Nexmanis. I'm with the House Labara Jewelers Guild. If anyone in here or anyone you know needs jewelry repair, jewelry crafting, or gems cut, uh, I'll be in town for at least the rest of the day. He stares at you with a slightly glazed over look of complete indifference, spits in the glass, wipes it down with the edge of his uh, apron, clearly not cleaning it in the least uh, from any stains that were already on it, sets it up on uh, with some other glasses in the back and says, three ale. I will take an ale. I do not know about my companions. I believe they are looking for food. No, but we'll take the ale. Thank you. He um, runs three uh, three mugs under the um, the tap of the single uh, large barrel behind the bar, 
you presume there's not a lot of options here. You get ale and you get whatever is in this warm keg that appears to have a little bit of moss or algae growing on the edge of it uh, with heavy drip stains and cracks here and there along the higher, drier parts. Oh, great. Um, he sets down the three in front of you, sloshing and spilling a little bit over over the edge, and says, uh, four coin each. I give him two. I put down two gold coins. All right. That's is that's going to he meant for copper, right? He did, yeah. Okay. So two gold coins, and I say, with this, I would like to ask some questions and get the answers for them. He says, um, he scoops the coins up, puts them away. Grim Grim moves over to his shoulder and kind of bumps in and says, and get the antidote for whatever we're about to drink. You think this is poison? Did you see it? Is this poison? I look at the bartender. Shh, wait. <laughs> he says, uh, uh, Well, that's rude. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Callista's actually saying, uh, Shay's actually saying that. Like, wow, that's rude. <laughs> Grim is already on the other side of Shay, nodding his head like, yeah, man, that was rude. He spits in the next <laughs> cup and says, no refunds. You know Why? Cup that's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll t- uh, I'll drink the ale, drink some of it. It's uh bitter and warm, slightly sour. It's like ro- it's like a road ale. Mm, yeah, it's like a road oh. hard ale. <laughs> so, what's your name and what's this place's name? I haven't seen a sign. He says, "Look, are you guys getting food or are you just getting in my way today? I got cups to clean." You I told food? you I had questions. Question number one, do you have food? <laughs> question number one was, is this poisoned? Sorry, question number two. That seems like a pretty important question. Oh, we de- guys, we definitely should go back to the other place. This is obviously not sanitary. Come on, you're a man of faith. Yeah. I'm assuming uh, the stuff here is definitely an act of faith. I, I, it's going to take a lot of prayer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a paladin. I'm not immune to a disease. He says, um, we got bread. We got meat that goes on the bread. Oh, look, choice. <laughs> <laughs> you want better options, go somewhere nicer. Notice he did not specify that either one was fresh, nor what kind either one was. Whether we have to catch it ourselves or not. <laughs> right. Grim wants to look around the place, just like, it's just dark. It's di- it's dim and kind of, um... It's like one of those local dives where only the hard-working folk gather. Give me a perception check. Uh-oh. Ah, uh, 22. That is your initial impression, but on closer inspection, you do not think that these are just, like... A, well, there aren't docks or whatever, but these aren't just, like, peasant folk who work in town and do, um, this is a cavalcade of, like, unique individuals, as well as some more blue-collar people. You wouldn't call them ruffians, per se, but um, there's certainly a theme to it. Those who do have their um, their hoods down look a bit scraggly, um, a lot of uh, piercings and tattoos, so we may have just wandered into Sister Margaret's, is what you're saying? That is actually incredibly apt, yeah. Uh, and I realized this. Yeah. Uh, okay. The um, So, like, in the corner you see uh, – I, I can describe a couple more people unless you just want to continue. No, I, uh, give me descriptions and then I'll continue. You see a couple um, just kind of rangery-looking types, you know, uh, leather armor, bows, swords – you notice that a lot of people appear to be armed, and those that don't appear to be armed, you're pretty sure are armed. You see a very um, gruff-looking dwarf with a couple of flagons of ale at his table. He just has a, he kind of looks over at you and doesn't necessarily meet your eye, but just kind of like sneers and goes back, looks grumpy. In the far corner, you see what you think are halflings at first. But then when they kind of turn and you get a better view, you realize it's actually two goblins with cloaks kind of drawn up around their uh, their heads. A very strange uh, sight, uh, indeed, in a, in a city. 
uh, or town. Couple elves here and there. Not those familiar elves. No. Okay. So I recognize what this place is, and I recognize it as a threat. Yes. Mm. That's safe to that's safe to say. That's up to you. I'm feeling like grim things. I I agree that that is a good comparison. Yeah, we're in the wrong place at the wrong time. Maybe not necessarily. What? Well, well, for the adventure, maybe we're in the right place at the right time. Grim feels like, oh shit, and will not stand up. Where I assume we're sitting, waiting for food. Here at the bar. Sort of stiffen. Sort of, uh, like, suddenly his posture is far too erect, far too proper, far too not grim. And just look at everyone and go, I think we should go. No? Do you, do you guys, is there a particular reason why we came in here? Can you remember? I think if we're gonna find jobs, this is the place we're gonna find them. I'm not sure yeah. these are the jobs we want. Well, we looked every place more with more station, and we didn't find anything. So I think it's either going to be this or sweeping the streets. Next to you, you hear a little bit of a clatter as a chair is pushed in, and then something scrambles up on top of the chair. And presenting himself to you, to the side, is a well-dressed no, or uh, halfling. Sorry, a well-dressed halfling, and he kind of beams up at you past a curly mustache, and says, Gentlemen and lady, welcome to our establishment. Did I hear mention of someone looking for a job? Oh, shit. Yes. There is much work to be had for those who are skilled enough to do it. Like what? Well, there's exploring, there's transportation, messaging, courier services... Now and then, meat is needed if you're of the hunting type. Oh, shit. See, I'm a local businessman, and I, I'm always on the... He kind of pats the side of his nose. Always on the lookout for strong talents, those who can carry themselves and do good work for Grand's Uh, What's your name again, little guy? Folk around here call me Badger. Badger. Can you give us just a quick second, Badger? He uh, kind of puts his hands together and says, Please, take all the time you need. And he kind of just, like, leans back slightly, but doesn't move at all, and just continues to smile at you. Thanks, buddy. I want to, like, pull the other two as far from earshot as I can and go, look, I don't trust this little guy or this place or anything we're going to do here. But if we really want something crazy, I think I know the play to make. Are, is that, are, are we looking for a job and to get paid and do something, or do we want to get out of here? No, we uh, we should definitely try to find some jobs. I mean, Minerva yeah. told us about that uh, one for the jade creature. I don't. I statue. can't guarantee that's what he'll give us. But if you want him to give us a, a good job, I think I can get him to give us one of the high paying, like really good ones. Do it up. Yeah, Shay. Well, I'm I'm assuming it's not going to be pretty work. Okay, I'll t- I'll trust you. Well, I want to leave. No, no, but... no. You set this up. We do this. All right, then. And I'll walk back over to Badger. <laughs> it's not very far away. You didn't get... So he says... But it's like, a, it's like a, a half step. Yeah, you, like, turn around. around. He's right yeah. there. Yeah. The, he he says, over a couple of bar stools. Since you've already spoken to Minerva and are heading out after something for her, perhaps we can figure out something that you can do on the way. I'm all about convenience. Yeah, very cool. Look, we... uh. We're trying to keep kind of a low profile, but uh, I don't know if you heard about what we're down in Baytown. He uh, takes off his little hat and puts it over his heart and says, damn shame. Mm-hmm. Kind of brushes off the hat mm-hmm. and says, doesn't mean you can't be more useful here. Yeah, well, you know, it depends on, on exactly which side was paying whom now, doesn't it? I mean, to some, Baytown was a tragedy. To others, it was a resounding victory. Not to us, though. I just want to make it really clear. Damn it! You'll notice that a couple people sitting in chairs around kind of agitate at at that. Shay, not at her, at what you said. Well, no, totally. That's I know. What kind of plan is this? Badger says, um, "This is the not running away plan." I think that you'll find here in Grensmott 
while many of us have made our livings on tools of war and the crafting of weapons and armor, none of us profit from it. Well, we can certainly agree that things went horribly, horribly wrong in Baytown. He says, look, if you've already seen action like that, then perhaps you are capable enough to retrieve some goods, especially if Minerva trusts you. Gold star in my book. Beaming recommendation. These goods? And from whom? Uh, more a what at this point. Mm. You know about the, the ruins of this area, right? Uh, sure. Well, there's some bits and baubles I wouldn't mind getting my hands on. And provide the proper coin to recompense. One question. Is there any even legend or childhood horrifying story about mummies in these ruins around these parts? Because where we come from, mummy rots a bitch. Never heard of a mummy. I'm ordering a second beer, just so you know. You can have mine. Oh, yeah, mine okay. too. All right. Never mind. <laughs> just double fisting the new. <laughs> and whatever's in the bottom of that glass is not, not the worm. I don't know what it is. He sits down on the edge of the bar and kind of crosses his legs so that, like, uh, his feet are flat on the stool. And he kind of looks at you and says, Listen, friend, the Daxian Empire has a lot of ruins around here and a lot of buried wealth that I think we can agree the dead don't need. I just figured if you wanted to make a little bit of a name for yourself and some nice profit, you might want to go delving into one of these places. And if you should happen to find some... Accoutrement of office, of whatever noble is buried in that place, I'd pay well for it. You mentioned the dead. Well, no one from the Daxian Empire is still alive. But not exactly dead. I'm just curious why you would need somebody like us and not, I don't know, say anybody else to wander down into an old cave and bring you back relics. How many farmers do you know that are willing to just wander off in the middle of the day? For gold? This time of year? The answer is none, and I wouldn't send them, even if they were willing. You have a map? I have some directions. <sighs> what do you say, guys? Well, so let's go for it. Nah, that's what I thought. It's either that or sitting here and drinking that stuff that goes for beer around here. Not We, we could also leave this place and go drink better things. And who's going to pay for that? I will... Uh, I'm sure there's other jobs. We have more than enough money to... Pay for a couple of meals. By the way, is the whole bar still staring at us? Okay. Sounds like we're in, Badger. Excellent. Excellent. I'm glad to hear it. Now, let me lay down the business contract here. Oh. You will go. Whatever you find, yours to keep. Accept the badges of office of a Daxian official. I would like the headpiece, the rod, and the badge. Three items. You bring them to me, I bring you 200 gold. Now, these parts are quite dangerous. I don't know if you've been outside the walls of Grensmont much, or strayed from the, the road proper, but I could also arrange for a guide for you. Define dangerous pieces. Did I say dangerous pieces? You said they could be dangerous. Yes, the, the woods are dangerous. Oh, woods! Oh, I thought... Uh, never mind. I misunderstood. Yeah, no, he's just referring to... He says, I don't know if you know about this area's... He kind of clasps his hands together under his mouth and he kind of like points him forward and goes, No problem. But it's very real. That's why I would never send anyone unqualified. They taste better than goblins. I wouldn't be willing to check. Those of you with high perception might notice a little bit of a perk up from the corner. <laughs> he says, Now... If you're looking for a little bit of help, I can arrange for, like I said, a guide. Uh, someone a little bit more skilled with the handling of gnolls. Yeah. I like that. I would like a guide. Better that than the one that rings through the forest. I imagine he will work for a cut of whatever you find. And he kind of um, stands up, dusts himself off, and says, Oh, Grimgall. Grimgall. 
And the grumpy dwarf slams down his mug and kind of like rolls his head over and looks. Kind of harumps, gets up, grabs the maul next to the table, hoists it, and just kind of walks over. And says, I badger, what do you need? These fine folk are looking for some help. We could hire a guide and perhaps a trusty strong arm. They're going after some gnolls. Isn't that right, my dear lady? Yes. Is this him? Grimgall is the finest gnoll fighter in all the land. Uh, you look and you actually see that Grimgall is adorned with not only his uh, splint mail armor and his big maul uh, that's rather ornately carved and, and dwarfed up, but um, he's also got like a belt of smaller hammers, kind of like arrayed, like one would have like daggers, right? Uh, he's also got furs. These look to be some sort of weird spotted dog-like pelt. And uh, Grimgall harumps again and says, Only good thing about a knoll is sometimes they die easy. I like this guy already. He kind of looks up, looks you guys up and down and says, Not that easy. Can I roll something to suss out uh, Badger's intentions here? Yes. Insight? Yes. Nope. What'd you get? Uh, eight total. You think he is being genuine. He is interested in doing business. Grimgall kind of looks you over and says, Where are we off to? Just wandering looking for knolls or picnic in the woods? I don't know. Badger, where was this, uh, where should we be looking for this taxing official's items? He says, um, well, I suppose any ruins that you can find have a good chance of containing the burial point of some official or knight or other hero of the Daxian Empire. So I imagine if you can find any untouched ruins, you'd be good to go. Granted, if Minerva already has you on a task, two birds and one stone, as it were. That's very hard to kill two birds with one stone. Grimgall says, um, not if you throw it hard enough. I also thought you had a map. He told you he would have, to, he would give you directions. And he gave you Grimgall. Oh, I, Grimgall asked where we were going, so I thought he didn't know either. Yeah, he has not offered up any other information you have. What information you have? Grimgall, lead the way. Guys, you ready? Yeah, might as well go. Well, Minerva kind of pointed you towards something, so I don't know if you're going for that or... Yeah, we'll probably go for the uh, one she mentioned. So not taking this job. No, we can take this one and do hers as well, hopefully. The Yeah, the point is hopefully you can do both. Aha! Yeah. Sync up those quests on the mission log. Mm. Granted, I think you guys don't have anywhere near as much information as perhaps you might need, but... I agree. We're used to that. Grimgall would, uh, will say, All right, here are the terms. 100 gold now, 50% of the take. I work with a partner. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, thanks, Grimgall. If you really want to, if you really want to get this done, you'll take her too. Yep. Uh, thanks. See you later. We're gonna go, uh, don't we still have a letter to deliver? We have something else to do besides give this guy all our gold for what we were about to accomplish. <laughs> letter is like two weeks' journey. Okay. Yeah. I'd rather do that than pay him all the gold we're going to get in advance. I mean, do we really need him? Probably, but 100 in advance and 50% of the take? That's yeah, that... all of it. That's outrageous, especially since Badger said that he would take care of the finding a guide. Yeah. He never said he was going to pay for it. He said he could find you a guy that you have to hire. Yep. I don't like this guy or this place. Let's go. <laughs> I like that you guys are the first D&D party in history not to haggle. Yeah. Nah, why? We're, we we have a job. Let's go somewhere else and find what she wanted us to find. And we don't, I, This beer? I mean, the beer should have told us what we were in for at this joint. That's fine with me. I downed the last of the, uh, the beer. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh did you have to chew the last swallow a little bit that's that's yeah grimgall as he kind of goes back to his table will just say remember when they start chewing on your skull that means they're angry but they're also probably close to death so just give it the last little attaboy and he sits down thanks grimgirl let's go yeah okay gonna need gonna need some more direction I don't know where we should go. 
<laughs> can't can't run the game without a plan. We're gonna go back to Tessa's and get something to eat for real, and then we will plan um where to go. That sounds like a really good idea. Still looking for a tailor. Gonna get paid first. Uh, on the way back from this tavern, you see uh, a general goods store. Yeah, I mean they have orcs in town, that right? Young Grand is an orc, yeah. I'm just for my size, it's not like normal human clothes size. Oh, yeah, no. That you could buy off the shelf or off the it's, rack. However as long, yeah, as long as it's big enough. So yeah, I will go in there real quick, look for some uh, simple tunic and breeches and whatnot. We gotta go across the street to the Orc and Tall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think you could probably find something pretty reasonable for, uh, like, I don't know, four silver? Okay. I don't know, I don't know how much clothes cost. I'm not gonna open the book for it. Yeah, I, I don't think they're very much. Four silver's fine. And if that makes more sense to be like two sets of clothing, then great, whatever. I will give them a gold and, uh, try to get five silver back from them. Okay. Okay. Alright. No, I'm good. So we can go get dinner? Yes. I, I'm ready to eat. Yay! Alright, you uh, enter Tessa's. It looks the same as it always does. Mm. Comfort. Eventually one of the um, servers comes around and asks for your order. The usual. Well, we've been here like, what, twice? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, about uh, one silver for a, like a modest dinner what about for a slightly less modest dinner like as as a man of the cloth air quotes grim wouldn't want to go full gluttony but there's some gray area to play with like five silver would, or five uh copper would get you a a lesser meal than you probably really want but would you save you no i'm actually looking for more meal oh no i'm i'm looking for more just not so much that it might be too excessive. I want as much as I can get without, like, doubling it up. So just for the record, I'm just using the, the chart that's squalid, poor, modest, comfy, yada, yada, yada. Modest is three silver uh, per day of meals. So I was doing the one silver for one meal. It's just how I came to that. So I don't know where you want to go on that that chart, is essentially. You might want to go with, with, like, a two silver meal. Okay. If there's, like a like, a jumbo size meat. Yeah, I mean, they can fit you in there. All right. I'm looking for, like, the bottomless fry kind of option. Sure. Excellent. Okay, I will pay for my modest meal. Yeah, just mark off whatever you guys need. Okay. Uh, There's a minstrel in the corner. Uh, The place is nice and comfortable and warm. You know, moderate buzz of talking and whatnot as as you sit there. Certainly less interesting than the other place, but also less sidelong glances and stares. I really like it here. It is a nice inn. We should probably discuss uh, Minerva's quest, as well as Badger's. I I was thinking if we were able to find those pieces that he wants, we could sell them to him once we re- return. Sure. We might even be able to charge him a lot more than he asked for, depending on how bad he wants them. His price was 200 That's what he told you he was willing to pay. That's what he said. Yeah. Indeed. And, so, then his, and then his buddy wanted to charge us 200 gold to take him and find them. 100 well, 100 up front, and then 50% of the take. Yes. That's another 100. Yes, for him and one other person. Yeah. That's all 200. Wait, 50, no, 50% of the, what you find. Uh-huh. Not, not having anything to do with Badger's deal. Badger's, Badger's deal was completely separate. He was going to explore the, wherever you go with, with him, and you got, your party keeps 50% of whatever loot you find. And Grimgall was saying he wanted 50% for him and his partner. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it seems steep. Yeah. So Minerva wants us to search uh, the ruins, I believe, northwest of here, along uh, along the, um, the lake to the east, in search of some kind of jade statue, I think. She said jade creature with inlaid gold. I think it's a statue, but... I mean, there's magical creatures everywhere. Sounds like we go north and take a turn and we find some place to look and maybe we can stumble across her stuff and Badger stuff. That's the hope. I mean, crazier things have happened. 
Now we how I mean we still have plenty of time in the day, so should we head out now or after we eat, and then or or in the morning? I think we should finish eating up, and then head out because we don't want to wait. Generally, waiting like unless we wait until dawn to head out, so we have all day would be one thing. We don't want to get there at dark. Although a thought occurs to me. We could spend several days wandering around a wilderness looking for it, so we might need to go prepared for the dark. Like maybe a tent and some bed rolls, Some rations. Lantern. Don't we have that stuff already? I don't have a tent. Why do you not have a tent? Well, maybe we... I'd be surprised if any of you had a tent, actually. They're not that common. <laughs> What's a tent? We'll sleep under the stars, like real people. I mean, you for sure all have bed rolls and all that, but uh, a tent might... Might not be something you can have. Might be too much. How, uh, I've got a blue tarp, but I don't have anything canvas or nice. No, I don't. Uh, so should we finish up eating? Yum, yum, yum. And head out? Is that northwest or northeast? Northwest by the lake. Uh, definitely more west than north, but yeah. Yeah, I, I took down the note. She said that the ruins, unexplored ruins, have been spotted to the northwest and that there are some that have been already raided to the south. Well, let's head northwest. It's it's important to note that that set of instructions is more like there have been things found in those areas. It is likely that there are other things that have not been found in those areas. Like, oh, there are really small places that have been found. Why would there be a small thing instead of a big thing? That's That's more what it is rather than if that makes sense. Do you guys suppose if we head that direction, we'll run into people who know more about it? Or who are you asking? Or in what capacity are you asking? I'm sorry. Uh, in-game. Is asking us. Yes. I think that some of those individuals from that last establishment will be keeping an eye on us once we leave the town. Hmm. That's a fair assumption. We well, might... we don't have much choice. Yeah, if they're going to do that anyway. We might be able to use that to our advantage. I don't know how, but we might be able to. So that was a really yummy lunch. One last thing. What do we do about Finn? Man, his drug addiction has just gone too far this time. No. We'll uh, leave a note. We'll leave a note. In Dwarvish. He's not a dwarf. I don't know oh, if yeah. he speaks Dwarvish. That's what he's been working on all day. Was yeah. Speaking Dwarvish? Yeah. In order to avoid confusion, let's not do it in Dwarvish. Well, to be fair, I don't speak Dwarvish, so if we're going to do that, one of you is going to have to do it. All right. I'll write a quick note. Go to ruins. <laughs> be, be back soon. <laughs> yes. Northwest. Just NW and then we'll just dump it in, his, in our room. Okay, let's go. Why is it I picture him going, Ruins Northwest? He's like, is that a music festival? I don't understand. Let's go. To our death! All right, as you head west towards the western gate of the city, that's out past the guardhouse, presumably, you uh, start past, as you pass the guardhouse, you see um, a woman in armor standing in front of those two men who um, are holding their swords with weights on them, and she seems to be saying something to them. The woman has... Uh, Oh, it's kind of like the Fight Club guys. A cascaded braid of um, like platinum blonde hair, uh, sword on her hip, and a, um, the other hand at her hip uh, kind of looks like she might be scolding them. Watching from the fence is a um, another young woman in robes, just kind of uh, at the edge of the fence of this like kind of muddy practice field, and she's just kind of watching with one elbow rested on a fence post and the other uh, and her chin kind of resting on her hand, and she's kind of watching this all happen. She looks human at first, but she has a kind of weird bluish skin tint that you kind of see uh, on her arms as you pass, and her hair almost looks like it's constantly moving. And as you look, it looks like almost like little bubbles or um, little currents of water are moving below her skin. Only because you pass fairly close, because it's not a huge, you know, broad walkway. Um... That was creepy. It was just creepy. Says the guy who lights on fire. Bubbles under the skin? Well, of course. Not like bu- not like bubbling skin, like visually, like it, like moving through. 
Her skin isn't like 3D, like bubbling and pulsing. Oh, like a like a lighting effect. Or well, like that's a, different. Yeah, I think so. I mean, that's it's an expensive implant, but kind of pretty. And ahead of you, the um, with the kind of setting sun behind it, not like fully setting, but setting sun behind it, uh, are is the large gate out to the west. It is closed, but you do see that there is a man door in it. Shall we? Yeah, I mean, just heading out. Here we go. Okay. You approach the guards, tell them that you're you're leaving. They uh, ask you just a couple quick questions and tell you to be careful out in the, out in the woods. They mention that um, gnolls have been spotted out towards the uh, the lake, so you know be on your guard and you know, be be ready. And then they open the man door and let you out and close it behind you with a heavy locking thud. With that, you are outside of Grensmont, uh, in the western woods, heading towards the lake. The lake, yeah, where where the knolls are, because that's where, what's his name, said we should go. Badger. The ruins are, um, well, a lot of the little marks that I think Minerva showed you were at the lake, or near the, like, near the, the coast. Are you just kind of generally walking there, or are you, um, taking the, what, what kind of general path there is? It's not really a road. Per se. Are either of you any good with uh, moving in the wilds? Well, I mean, I, I've walked trails before. I meant going off trail, off road. No, it's, uh, yeah, generally when that happens, I end up with mummy rot. How many times have you had mummy rot? <laughs> the one time I went off trail. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's a fair point. <clears throat> no, I'm not very good at it, sorry. Not not to be racist, but how's that draconian nose? I, uh, not good. No, no, no. You guys make your way through the woods, heading generally west. The sun is starting to dip low on the horizon, um, or towards the horizon, uh, over the the lake in the distance. From what you know, it's probably about um, a few hours to the shoreline. So it kind of depends on what what sort of pace you want to make. You know, are you planning to hit the shore and then camp? Or are you wanting to uh, go pretty fast so that you get there a little bit quicker and can explore a little bit into the evening, or or what? As long as we can make the shore in time to camp for the night, I'm good with that. Yeah, and I think you know, with the knolls, I want to keep going as well. Okay, you reach. The shore, after about three hours of uh, walking, the sun is now, you know that speed up it does at the horizon, and then gone. So it's getting pretty, uh, pretty long shadow, pretty, pretty deep. The testament of how large Seraphis is, uh, is actually warping your perspective. Even though you can't see it from here, it's warping your perspective of where the sun is setting. A phenomenon that you have heard about from passing travelers attributed actually to the magic of the city, whether or not that's true, never really known. The um, the edge of the lake is uh, a little bit choppy as the the tide changes and the winds kind of pick up into the evening. A um, fairly strong breeze is coming across the water. You notice that it's kind of rolling hills and grassland here with bits of rocky outcrops and cliffs, uh, a little bit more of that than forest compared to, especially down down more south uh, near Baytown, where it was kind of forested cliffs and whatnot. This is more um, outcrops and edges, a little bit Lake Michigan, but not quite as north. So yeah, you find yourselves pretty much at the, uh, at the bank. Right, so should we make camp here? Yeah, okay. Probably as safe a place as any. Yeah. I'll take it first. Watch them. All right. So what does um what does a making camp for this party look like? I think since both of you can see better in the darkness, I should take first watch. I'm kind of a morning person, so I'll take last watch. Okay. Camp means uh, you know lighting a fire, spreading the thing around, maybe heating something up. See. Yeah. Campfire, dinner, bed rolls. I mean, I, I presume that you guys aren't uh, literally just setting all that out and then immediately collapsing into into sleep. No, we build a rock fort around the entire perimeter. No, 
I think Grim is probably going to collapse into sleep. Okay. Is anyone doing anything before they, they go to bed? I mean, I'm going to take first watch off. Well, you're on first watch, so I mean, it's, it's really, sh- sorry, it's really Shay if Bobby's going to sleep. No, not really. Okay. Yeah. Then, uh, night begins to, uh, to get deeper and deeper as the first two go to bed. Madrax, um, you look into the fire, just kind of watching it a little bit, then every once in a while you kind of, you know, go to the outskirt of the camp and kind of look around, listen to the, the waves crash, look around. Uh, is there anything that you do while you're on watch? No, not really. Okay. I just want to make sure I provide a, a, as much opportunity for you guys to really flavor as possible, so I don't want to just steamroll to, nope, it's morning. No, I'll just pace around. Okay. After a proper amount of time, you realize it's it's time to wake up Shay and try to go to sleep. I will violently shake Shay. <laughs> it's time to wake up. <laughs> well, okay. I guess. <laughs> Thanks. Shay, the uh, fire's gotten pretty low. And it's uh, probably right around like um, midnight. Or sorry, one in the morning. It's past midnight, is what I meant to say. I'm guessing about three hours watch for for each of you. Not not quite. So yeah, probably around one o'clock in the morning. Okay. Why don't you go ahead and give me a uh, perception check? Perception check. Okay. Four. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just keep in watch. After a few hours, um, you grow kind of bored and decide it's been long enough, and you wake up Grim for him to take his his watch so that way you can get a little bit more sleep. And when Grim wakes up, uh, <coughs> it looks like Shay tossed a little bit of uh, bits on the fire, so it's mostly kind of just smoldering at this point with a little bit of, of, of embers, not any sort of roaring flames we're just kind of a little warm warm pocket grim's gonna look around there's not like extra firewood though right probably not i don't know okay really gather any so uh grim's gonna stretch oh yeah that's good feels pretty good got pretty got a pretty good nap there uh gonna kind of look over shay real quick kind of give a glance over to the other side where the lump I oh, walk over to Madrax and kind of pull the blanket up a little bit, like kind of up to the chin, make sure he's tucked in good. And uh and then I'm going to go wander like just at the edge of the firelight where I can still see OK. But I want to find like extra like start gathering an arm load of firewood, because even even in, in a few hours when it's time for them to wake up, we're going to need to make some coffee. It's going to be time to warm up and get ready to go. Grim's thinking he wants to be ready for, you know, when when everybody's awake and time to get up. So he's going to just start gathering firewood in a like a loose circle around the camp. Yeah, there is some driftwood uh, here and there. Perfect. You're able to, to gather. It's still pretty dark out. You kind of hear what you think is um like a bird in the distance. It's pretty early in the morning for it to be birds because it doesn't sound like an owl. So I'm looking to make our perception check. Uh, 19. You hear what sounds a bit like a, um, like a shrill whistle kind of bird call. Like a, like a bird whistling kind of shrilly. And then you, you hear what, um. Shrilly, you must be joking. You hear, uh, what sounds like a group of birds kind of take off from the woods in the, to the south and take to Wayne. Look, a couple calls and whatnot. That's a good, um, I don't know, 500, 600 feet away. When you saw the woods before. Would Grim recognize this as a cause for alarm? I don't know. See, I would like to think he does. Considering how much of a pansy he was in the bar, I have no idea anymore. Well, I'm just what saying, like, up to. <laughs> a nature or any intelligence check is going to be a minus one. Yeah. So, I don't know if he'd be like, ooh, that was scary, or if he'd be like, oh, fuck, something's coming. I'll let you do a, um... Or if he'd be like, eh. That's a hundred feet away. I don't care about that. I don't know that an insight check is really right for this, uh, but I'll let you do a general wisdom check. Wisdom. Oh, I like general whiz. Uh, that would be a nineteen. Uh, yeah, it's too early for birds to just be taken off on their own. Okay. And am I like still circling camp with an armful of firewood? You're probably carrying a couple pieces of driftwood, yeah. Okay, so I will like quietly hustle back, and I want to gently set down the my firewood stash somewhere near the fire. 
and I'm going to go over and rustle up Madrax first. Just like gently at the shoulder, be like, Madrax, something's coming. Wake up. Shh. Shh. It's me. Shh. Wake up. Something's coming. And then I want to like go over and do the same thing. And violently shake. Shake away now. <laughs> Shay, wake up! The only way anyone would except Shay from now on. Okay, yeah, both of you are groggily getting getting woken up. What's up? Something's coming. What? What's, what's... No, shh. Something's coming over there, where those birds flew away from that trail. That way, where I'm pointing. Fireball. Uh oh. <laughs> what's the range on fireball? <laughs> Do I have all my spells back? Uh, I, have you cast any? I casted some in town. He's asking if he got his full night's oh. sleep. Uh, yes, he did. <laughs> okay. Fireball! Uh, fireball is 120 feet? 150, I believe. 150? It, it does not matter either way. You send it out, you see the little point of light hit about uh, 120 feet or so. I imagine at some point in time, Madrax has like gone somewhere where he could just see how far it would shoot. So that's not far enough. And it explodes. Uh, it looks like it hit part of like a rolling hill. Uh, and just this massive <laughs> kind of illuminates the the area about 120 feet away. It still does not illuminate the woods. And you remember from before night fully fell that those woods were probably about 500, 600 feet away. But um, there is this great <laughs> of fire ex- explosion out there. All right, well, I'm going to go back to sleep. I think was that's that a diversion? <laughs> Got it. I'll lay back down. A, I think that's more of a dinner is served kind of uh, thing. Mm. We should go. Like D- Madrax laid back down. Yeah, we're going back to sleep. I would like um, Shay, you, Shay and Grim to make perception You go checks. over there. I'll go over here. Oh, shit. Perception. Oh, Thanks, that's... Madrax. Not a good one. Let's call that a six. Oh, nice. I got a five. You are, you are blinded by the sphere of fireball still. What? <laughs> I, I'm gonna give my inspiration to shave for that perception. Okay. That's not a good idea, but okay, thank you. <laughs> Sixteen, okay. You hear what sounds like the beginning of kind of a series of howls in the southern distance. Be quiet. I just want to go back to saloon. Now wake up. We're in trouble. Thanks uh, to you. Uh, I am uh, mage armor. Sparkly, sparkly, sparkly. Mage armor is literally cast with jazz hands, right? Yeah. <laughs> no. You have to go. Or, or at the very least, spirit fingers. Use spirit fingers for spiritual weapon. Ah, so... Yeah. Or big bee's or big bee's hand. I think I think we should go, guys. You know, just not be here. We should stand and fight. And Grim looks at you and goes, "No, I'm kidding. Let's get the hell out of here." Where are you gonna go? Away. Uh, Lots of ways. The way we came, except west. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go. Or east, rather. I'm sorry. We've been saying west this whole time. East. East is the correct direction. West would have fucked you over. Okay, I'll change we that. We came north. Notes. West would have been crazy. And west a little bit, right? No, because oh, we were right. east then. You're going, you're going east. Yeah, I just, I just. Now we want to go west. No, let's go north, right? West takes you back to Grensmont. North. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, we had it east, so let's now go north. Whatever takes west away from the howling knolls, I'm in. North is away from the woods, yeah. I mean, there's other woods up there. I but... don't believe in the R.O.U.S.s, but I believe in the Howling Knolls. There's a rocky outcrop kind of ahead of you up there. Oh, uh oh. Is it an ambushy looking rocky outcrop? It could be. It'd be a good place to ambush some knolls. Mm, oh, ambush some knolls, would it? Or be ambushed by some knolls, yeah. Mm. A lot of suspiciously goblin shaped rocks. I don't know. Hey, there's some <laughs> rocks up there. We can probably hide or ambush them from there. Ah, okay, let's let's go up there. Do we want to, or shall we just keep going? Uh, fuck. I'd honestly rather not fight them. How do? How long can we outrun them? Is the real question. Knolls? Can I roll anything about knolls? I mean, I had to have fought some in the desert. Oh, uh, probably, yeah. You know that what they taste like. I imagine you know how fast they run. What do you want me to roll? That would be a. Uh... 
Oh, God. Uh, nature? I'm going to say nature. Yeah, it's kind of like an anatomy type check. Yeah. I got, uh, see, oh, I've got a zero bonus, so I got an 11. Woo! Uh, you remember Knowles being distance and, like, speed. They're big. And Knowles is a, uh, I mean, they're, they're medium humanoids, but they're, they're big. They're, like, nine to ten feet tall, usually hulking over humans and even dragonborn, able to cover pretty long distances. You don't know that if, if you're really trying to get away from them and you're right in the, like, in combat, they don't necessarily move faster than, than you can. But, um, you know that gnolls on the, on the march are, are dangerous. And that often, uh, hiding is the best option. Yeah, I don't think. <sighs> you mean we don't run up. <sighs> oh. <laughs> gnolls. Did you get enough sleep? No. Like, four hours short. Alright, uh, so we hide. Do I have anything that will help us hide? Uh, damn it. I got extra hit points. I got some healing for us. I got some more healing. I got jack shit. Alright, so what, what is the party doing? As, as you're discussing what spells you have ready. Do we try to set an ambush for this fucker? Yeah, these, I'm running towards these the fuckers, rocks. Whatever they are. I'm running towards the rocks to hide. Okay. I'm gonna follow if he's running. Yep. Shay, let's go. Okay. You have to travel about 200 feet to get to the rocks. Just a <laughs> open, basically sprint across the landscape, occasionally kind of like having to avoid tripping hazards and whatnot. The there's just enough light for um, Majrax to follow uh, quasi clumsily, but uh, follow along. You reach the rocks, um, and in general, it's kind of like a jagged outcrop of pointy bits, and you can kind of climb through them. It kind of reaches more of a cliff aspect as it hits the water, but for the most part, it's really just craggy rocks as opposed to, like, we can climb up this and then be on flat land up above. So if you're going to try to hide, that will be a potentially a group challenge just to kind of get yourselves hidden of stealth and survival, depending on how you're... Stealth if you're literally just trying to hide and be still. Uh, survival if you're trying to do any sort of like camouflaging or you know that kind of thing and if you want to actually set up an ambush then that's that's going to be its own thing uh well i rolled a 17 on stealth okay you kind of get up into some rocks and kind of like just wedge yourself back a bit madrax hey madrax i'll try survival shit i lost him what shay try to hide I am. Trying, no. that is. But I can still see you. Try try more. <laughs> <laughs> I'll close my eyes and cover my ears. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget, you have a disadvantage on your, uh, your stealth if you're going to do one. Yeah, no, even survival without a disadvantage, that's a nine. So apparently I'm not hiding any better than Shay. We can, like, wave at each other. Look, we're hiding. Hey, am I hidden? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, you wait. And you wait. And then you hear what sounds like. Heavy footfalls on the ground. And then some sort of loud sound is, um, and like a jangling, as if, um, like a creature jumped down from something from the ground. Give me perception checks. Ten. Two. Three. Grim, you hear what sounds like the heavy breathing of some sort of creature, possibly around the corner from the rocks that you guys are hidden inside at the moment. After a few moments from your vantage points where you can see out better than other things can see in. Well, as far as you know. You see a shape kind of move across the um, the moonlight and be silhouetted. Just a nine foot tall hulked form with heavy shoulders and a dog-like snout just silhouetted against the really early morning kind of moonlit darkness. A large spear on its back, 
and two swords in its hands. It kind of sniffs at the air. I don't see or hear anything. I think we're clear. You say that out loud? Yeah. But, I mean, softly. Immediately the head snaps down and looks. And uh, a growl emanates. And it jumps down um, into the... Where did that come from? Floor. And you hear other yipping and yowling from outside. Roll initiative. Damn it, my microphone was muted. Do I have time to cast a quick spell before initiative? Nope. Son of a bitch! Twelve. Okay. Five. I might have to switch to the gray D20. I'm going to rest it. Get it ready. Warm up, kid. I got 12 as well. And what were you, uh, Grim? 12. Oh, wait, what was Shay then? Five. Oh, alrighty. The knoll lunges at Madrex. The knoll's wild mane, like, comes behind it as it lashes out at you. It, uh, comes in with its right short sword. 19. Second is a, second short sword is a miss. Uh, does the 19 hit you? With mage armor? I'm gonna, I'm gonna cast shield. Which will put you at 21? Yeah. Okay. And then, um, as its first, its first hit glances off the magic, its second hit misses kind of wide and clatters off the stone. And with its, both its arms out wide, it'll reach in with its kind of fiercely frothing, angry mouth and try to bite you. It will miss. Can't quite get its jaws on you with the, the stones around you. Two more gnolls drop in from around uh, the area. Son of a bitch. The one kind of drops down, looks at his fellow, and sees Madrax. The other notices Shay. So versus Madrax, uh, two short swords. The first one is going to hit you. Do three damage. Then it's going to uh, kind of come in low and try to snap at your arm as its second sword misses and just trying to snap at your arm as you get out of the way. Uh, that is a 20, so that is a miss. Versus Shea. Uh, the two short swords miss, and it kind of lunges forward and, and bites at your uh, at your shoulder. That is a 19 to hit. Oh, yeah, easily. You're at 15, right? Yes. Okay. Oh, he does 8 damage. Okay. Oh, wait, I think the bite I think the bite is different. I'm sorry, I rolled the wrong. I rolled the same type of damage. It will be less. It is 5. Okay, it's not so bad. As uh, it, it bites on you and kind of tears some blood and its maw is now dripping, it kind of howls out into the night, and in the distance you hear the howl echoed. Cool. Grim, three knolls. How far apart am I from Shay and from Madrax? I think you're probably all within 15 feet of each other. Kind of in different little alcoves at what is essentially like a little... Would be a tidal basin if the if the waters were to, you know, overflow into here. Gotcha. Uh, let's see. I want... And they each have a knoll on them. Uh, Madrax has two. He has two. She has one. It appears that they have not seen you yet. Okay. Or at least you haven't been looked at. And you said we're all within 15 feet, so a 15-foot radius would encompass both of them and whatever's fighting them from me. Yes. Yes. Then for my main action, I will cast Spirit Guardians. And I'm going to designate my two comrades to be unaffected by it. What does your... Uh... Uh, when it enters for the first time or when it starts a turn, it has to make a Wisdom save. Or take 3d8 damage. Or 3d8. So this turn it does nothing except have their speed for whenever. Yep. What does your spirit guardians look like? They are angelic. No, no further. I'm opening it up to you. Let you do whatever. <laughs> they are uh, fire angels. Fire angels! If an angel, if angels could be made from a blowtorch. No, not what I thought. That's you were gonna what say. these angels would look like. All right. Uh, Madrax. Then, wait, nope. hold on, then I want to use my, uh, bonus action Beesh. to cast Spiritual Weapon. Oh, wait, no, I don't. Disregard that. If I were a mean DM, I'd start charging you for those. Yeah, no, let's, uh, let's not do that right now. Okay. I'll just stay here somewhat hidden. The moment you cast a spell, you are no longer hidden. I presume it has verbal components, but I don't actually know offhand. Yeah, but it doesn't say they have to be loud. Uh, yeah, no, they, they do. That's, that's a thing. It just says verbal. I mean, I have to move my hands too, but it doesn't say how much. Yeah, that's semantic, so 
Somatic. Semantic? Somatic. Somatic? It's all semantics. That's a different thing. No, they they are acutely aware of you once you once you have cast your spell. Yeah, guys. Merry drunks. I'm going to twin spell mind spike the two that are on me. Remind me what uh what targeting mind spike is? It's a wis- wisdom save. Can you twin a spell that's a si- yes? It just has to be a single target spell, right? Yep. Okay. Intelligence save. Uh, wisdom. Oh, wisdom. Okay. Yeah, okay, they both fail. Uh, it was pretty low damage, uh, eight psychic on both of them, but as long as I'm concentrating on it, I know where they are in case they run. Sure. For whatever reason. Sure, sure. And you only want one damage for it, right? For each of, or for both of them? It is technically two different spells. I'll let you roll separately for this. Alright, cool, thank you. Now for, for an area of effect attack, yes, you only do, but because you're twinning, I will allow you to cast the second. Much better on the second target. It's 15 psychic damage. That null looks pretty off. The moment it kind of goes, it um, blood starts leaking from its its nostrils. And it shakes something loose, and it just like roar, like growl roars at you, and lunges forward and bites at you, just immediately. I was just gonna describe what it looks like. Uh, for me, it, it kind of looks like it starts as like this purple energy translucent dragon head. And then it, when it splits off, it's just these two fangs that stab into their head. Okay. Very cool. That is super metal. That knoll, though, it does bite at you. Is the effect of shield still on? Because it's your turn. No, it's ended at the beginning of my turn. Okay. So that is a 16 to hit you. That hit it. Okay. You are going to take five points of piercing damage as it kind of blood frenzies. This is part of that whole I steal shit from 4th edition for this game. Oh no, that's totally cool. I will, uh, I'll yell out, I will heal. Don't worry about that, Grim. Kill him. Shay. Oh, did you, I'm sorry, did you have anything else? Cause that, that didn't interrupt your turn, but. No, that's it. Okay. Shay? You got one on you? Oh, can you, I'm sorry. Last thing. Majorx, please make a concentration, um, saving throw. Oh yes, I forgot. DC 10. Yeah, okay, I got an 11. Shay? Um, I'm going to sword burst. Okay. Every creature within five feet of me has to make a deck saving throw. It'll be just the one null. Yep. What's your DC? 15. He, like, lunges backwards as the swords spin around. Okay. That's it. Okay. That null will immediately, like, as he lunges back, he'll bring his swords around and come down on you with both swords. 21 and 15. Yep. Yep. Take a total of 10 damage from that. Okay. And then he lunges in to bite you uh, with a 17. You take an additional 5 points of damage. Okay. All right. The two on Majrax. The gnolls have to take a uh, oh, yeah. save at the beginning yeah. of their turns, too. Versus Shays. Makes it. Versus not Shays. One fails, the other two pass. Okay. Uh, the fail takes half damage. Or your 3d8. Three, seven, fourteen is the total. Okay, the one is cut down. Which one? <laughs> uh, the one that was already damaged, like significantly. The as the blades pass through the other one on Matrax, you kind of see it like its hackles raise and it's like kind of vibrates for a second and then it lashes out at him to bite him. Uh, does not roll well. But on his hit for his actual attack, he's going to come down with two swords on Majrax. Misses and crits. The crit will be um, 10 damage to you. And then he's going to reach in to bite you again. And that'll be um, an 18 to hit for three damage. So a total of 13. Fuck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm almost dead. Ouch. How's that party of three going for you guys? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Trash talk. Inappropriate. I'm so glad we turned down that dwarf and his stupid offer. Let's see here. Um, It is Grim's turn. Son of a bitch. Okay, so... uh, Actually, start of your turn, I would like you to make a perception check. Oh. Natural 20 for a 24. You immediately see a knoll not down here, but on top of a rock... Aiming a bow at you. Okay. 
So, uh, hmm, I'm going to have to try and sacred flame that motherfucker, which would be a 26 to hit. Uh, sacred flame is not a roll to hit. Oh, it's not? No, it's a deck save. Oh, it's a deck save. My bad. Sorry. You, you say. Yeah, which, which he fails. Yes. I'll take that too. Six radiant damage. Okay. And I, I assume there's nowhere for me to seek cover. You could try. Try to get behind some stuff. Uh, you're pretty limited in your, the space that you can move just due to, you know, you were hiding kind of in an alcove and you can't really go too far without getting into the other knolls areas. Well, and I don't want to, like, pull the sick, my spirit guardians away from one or the other of my friends. Yeah. How, exactly how far away am I from them? Are they, say, within 10 feet, or are they both beyond 10 but within 15 feet? The gnolls? No, my friends. 15, 20, yeah. Okay. That's good to know. I'm good. Okay. Uh, Madrax. Okay. I will, uh... Invoke my healing word and twin it for both myself and, uh, Shay. Okay. I was worried about you telling me not to just kill things, but nice. In fairness, that was before he took like 13 points of damage. Yes, that's also true. <laughs> also true. <laughs> <laughs> I have literally one hit of health left. Um, uh, I'm gonna do it at third level. So we're both getting, I'm rolling separately, right? For each of us? Yeah, unless we have a reason to believe that you shouldn't. Okay. I don't know if there's anything anywhere that indicates that you treat them as the same spell. I mean, if you were to do, like, Scorching Ray, or if you were to do something that targeted just one person, you would roll to hit them separately, right? So, I mean, I don't see why this would be any different, really. I agree. Uh, and appreciate it. At least for now. Okay. I got nine back, but Shay got 14 back. Get that nice. Right? Thank you. Yeah. Whew. Okay. And then I will firebolt the one of uh, with the bow and arrow. You do not see the one with the bow and arrow. Uh shit. Well, granted, there was. I will let you make a a um a check because there was the pillar of fire, but you're also in kind of a weird position. Okay. It's important to note: no matter what, you will have disadvantage on the roll to hit because you're engaged. Twin those two. Twin that third level. That's all my sorcery points. And my bonus action this turn. So I will just, uh, shit. Shocking graphs, the one left on me. Okay. I got, uh, 15 to hit. That will hit. Awesome. Six damage. Lightning damage. It leaves him smoking and parts of his flesh and fur charred and smoldering, but he stands. Can I, is there any way for me to shift my position around him to see the rocks better? Yeah, you can try to shift kind of to your side. Okay. Shay? I'm going to try a sword burst again. Uh, he saves Shay. Okay. R- rolled a natural 18. That's fine. Anything as a bonus action? Uh, nope. Alright, Grim, the knoll with the longbow, looks angry and pulls back and fires at you. 13, we'll miss you. Second shot will also miss you. Was he within 15 feet by chance? Nope. Damn it. But do go ahead and roll for the other two that are on them. 19. Both of them are cut down. Yes! Uh, on seeing this happen, the knoll on the hill will um, howl out and jump down, not towards you, but away. Back towards the uh, kind of a flatter area. How far away? You can't see him. He's on the other side of the rocks. Mm. That can't be good. He's going to get friends. I think his friends already know where. That's fair. We must be close. To what? I don't know. Something good. How's everybody doing? Who needs healing? I will. I will. All right. What do I got? I have. Nope. Oh. Uh. Nope, nope. Here we go. Are we still in combat? Oh, that's a good question. Technically, no. Wait. Technically? You're not under any immediate threat that you know of. Well, I could do two things here, guys. I could... I have one, um... 
really powerful spell left, and we could try and take a short rest and use dice, and I can use a spell that'll help us with that, or I can just do a quick heal. I would say quick heal, but go ahead. All right, I will cast Mass Healing Word, and everybody gets ten hit points. What's the casting time on that? Instantaneous bonus action. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's not prayer for healing. All right. Thank you. Sure, sure. Oh, you're very welcome. What are the chances we've stumbled across the entrance to something we want to search? Or is that up beyond that hill where the knoll disappeared? The knoll went back the way you guys have come. Oh, that's not reassuring. Because they had chased you from the south. Deeper into the rocks is north. Hmm. Can I, can I roll like a um, survival or nature check with Major X to know if he knows how scent works? In what way? Like... He is not very good at this, but I know that if you travel in water, your scent disappears until you emerge from the water. He would potentially think that, yes. Okay. I don't think you need a roll for that. What he would not know is how that does not necessarily work on, like, bloodhounds and a lot of other types of dogs well, that, that are, like, really good at, like, a, a, a bloodhound does not lose uh, scent uh, across small portions of water. Well, we're next to a lake, right? That's not a small thing of water. No, the lake is a massive, like, inland sea. Yeah. But it's also, you know, not, like, crossing a stream or anything. I say we swim, like, a quarter mile north and come and get out of the water. Dude, I'm wearing chain mail. Swimming is not really an option. Really? Chain I'm... mail, mace, morning star, I'm pretty much wearing anchors. And That's a fair point. I didn't know that had anything to do with swimming. Well, they're all made of steel. George didn't know that that had any mechanic <laughs> in the game. Well, maybe it doesn't. It does. As do your spell components getting wet. Well, I don't have components. I'm just throwing it out there as a, a thing. Things you are carrying getting wet will potentially ruin them, depending on what it is. Rations. I presume a lot of that stuff is pretty well sealed away. But, I mean, your bedroll will get wet, your clothes will get wet, all that. We don't have bed rolls anymore. Not at the moment. Yeah, if you didn't if you didn't grab them, if you just ran away, then no, you don't. We could run back. We got to go back to camp. Well, group. Okay. I mean, I'm not going to be super mean about the the swimming with the chainmail. He's strong enough to carry the chainmail, but it would definitely affect more than if he weren't wearing it. I could do that Pirates of the Caribbean two walking across the bottom thing. I do not I think... have water breathing prepared. Whatever we're going to do, we need to do it now before more of them get back. We barely handled four. That's a fair point. They came from the south. Should we head around the shore to the north? Find a better place to camp? A more fortified, hidden away? Maybe even stumble across the entrance to a cave kind of camp? Yeah. While we're talking, I'm going to switch one of my second level spells for more spell points. Sorcerer points. Okay. You hear yowling in the distance. Guess we better go. Let's run. Yeah. Shay, can you, uh, I don't know how fast you can fly, but can you stay above us and keep a watch on our, uh, back? Sure. I can do that. Aerial support, I like it. Groovy, thanks. Alright, so what are you do- doing? What are you guys doing? Shay takes to the air, fluttering. We're running. Alright, uh, give me a, that's really dexterity or, you know, climbing as much as it is, it is um, survival to navigate your way through the rocks, unless you just want to climb up and then try to traverse. Shay, when you kind of get up, you do not see anything within your field of vision. You do see that light is just barely cresting to the uh, the east. Oh, that makes more sense. So the whole me being confused on the western thing, which is just, it's been a long fucking day. The sun obviously would not have set to the east, so I just had my directions backward. It would have set at Grensmott, or over Grensmott. So just apply that, the story of it falling behind the wall as Sephiris, or, uh, Seraphis, as if you were on the other side of the city. So, my bad. Okay. So the sun does rise to the east, uh, over the lake. So you just barely see that kind of like dim morning light starting to rise. Okay, but no sign of uh, gnolls. You do not see any now. Okay. But you're still relying mostly on your dark vision at this point. All right. So what are you guys doing? How are you navigating this? Are we running north? Yes, but you're in a basin of rocks. Are you climbing up the rocks? Are you running through the rocks? What are you doing? I say up and over, guys. I agree. Okay. You get up to the top of the rocks. You start going. You find a couple 
dangerous looking crevasses that would plunge you down towards what looks like dampness. You hear um what actually sounds like uh running water as like kind of the lake maybe going off into a um a little bit of a stream up under the rocks. A couple uh different, you know, holes that you could, you know, slide down into and either be eaten by the, the very earth itself and scratched up or if, if need be you could hide in. Uh, you can, of course, also just jump across these and keep running north. Jump, run. Okay. Grim, you just leap from rock to rock until uh kind of settles out a little bit more rather than kind of jagged, like, peaks, almost where, like, it looks like the rocks were, like, crashed together, like, splintered fingers of stone and knives just kind of coming up to more rocky but manageable, and you're able to kind of just run across that, find mostly smooth paths, and now... uh even you have a pretty clear sight of uh, the sun rising to the east as uh, the weird morning gray light and mist off of the lake kind of illuminate ahead of you. Spooky. As you move north, the shore, of course, continues up gentle curve towards the east as you go. However, it's so large, the lake, that it's pretty gradual in general. You can kind of see ahead where, like, Oh, it's inset a couple feet as the curve goes. And to your left, it becomes a little bit more heavily wooded. Like, that starts to open back up a little bit more as the forest approaches the shoreline. You also notice that the uh, the tide has shifted slightly, so it's a little bit higher up the uh, the shore than it had been previously. That can't be good. Shay, do you see anything of interest from up there? Perception check. Unless you would like to just lie and be like, nope. No, sure, I'll roll perception. And then lie. Nine. Kind of flying over the uh, rock formation, a little bit behind them. As you look down, you kind of feel like the rocks form a bit of a funny shape. It looks like a weird little abstract design of, like like I said, like knives crashing together, or like reaching up towards you, trying to stab you out of the air. But up ahead, it looks mostly just clear, rocky shoreline. You see the forest... You see the mist kind of hovering over where it's starting to warm up in the cool night. Back behind you, you see uh, just barely kind of the edge of the forest kind of glimmering at the edge as the light starts to hit it. The, you know, nearly like 800 or 1,000 feet away at this point. Your your eyes are playing tricks. You think you see movement, but you don't really kind of look and you don't see anything. So no, you don't really see anything of interest. Um... And as they kind of move along, it's getting harder to see ahead of them because of the forest encroaching. Okay, that all looks clear up here, guys. Should we take cover in the woods and try to hide and see what happens? Sure. Okay, give me a general uh, survival check. This can be group-based or uh, one person, however you want to do it. Well, if I were to roll, I would roll a 10. I also got a 10. Four. You head into the woods... Shay, you pretty quickly lose sight of them uh, and have to land or get really low to be able to follow. Oh, wow. The uh, mark, I don't know. I don't remember what we said was the minimum that you had to take, but uh, that was equivalent to like 20 minutes. Okay. 20 minutes or the minimum, whichever is. The um, As you enter the woods, it's pretty not dense dense, but it's uh, also not like a tree and then like 50 feet away another tree it's you know it's a pretty solid canopy here looking around you don't really see anywhere we could just like plop down and hide but you could potentially um either spend some time trying to hunker down or um just find a spot and try to stealth in hopes that anything that might be following you just heads right past i'm in favor of stealth or you can keep moving either stealthily or at speed or however you want to do it obviously I didn't even see them following us, so I'd rather wait. Shall we hide? Yeah, that's what I'm voting for. Okay. You um, kind of nestle down in some of the uh, the detritus of trees. Um, you know, there's some leaves here and there. Kind of just hunker down at the base of some of the trees. And you wait. Uh, go ahead and roll stealth checks. Disadvantage for Krim, obviously. Yep. Six. I got a 20. 17. Okay. 
Grim is like quasi rocking back every time he moves. There's like a little bit of squeak and <laughs> looking this way and that, and you know, little bits of his his armor is kind of jingle jangling. Five minutes goes past, a very long five minutes. You watch and you don't see any movement. Five minutes turns to ten. You don't see any movement. Turns to thirty. All you hear is the kind of gentle bird song of morning. Forty-five. Psst. Hey guys. Guys. What? I don't, I don't think anything's coming. Yeah. Shall we just wait here until it gets uh, properly light then? Uh, if we're gonna do that, could we just make a camp and get some sleep? Madrax already fell back to sleep. <laughs> Madrax, have you seen Madrax? No, he disappeared a while ago. Uh, Madrax well, parts. Oh. A little tuft of leaves go from a pile. There he is. Well, go ahead and sleep if you want. I'll, uh, I'll stay up. I, I could really, and then Grim is out. You did just get a full sleep, like an hour ago. Still, he's gonna, like, lay down and fall asleep on the pile of leaves that just poofed. I'm gonna say that's gonna require a, um, some sort of check to see if you even can sleep. And say, like, an, uh, a constitution check. Check, not save? Check, not save. So the check was a 19. Does that mean I can or can sleep? <laughs> uh, it means you are able to calm yourself enough that you can kind of doze off. Ah. Get your adrenaline down. You guys may have the benefits of a long, or a uh, short rest, I'm sorry. Short rest of, of an hour. I don't think that helps me, but I'll take it. Yeah, I'm not going to let you guys have back-to-back long rests. Well, that would be silly. Yeah. Then it would be dark. So spend whatever healing... Surges you need or whatever, um, healing dice. Grim CEP. Alright, nothing happens during the hour. Just kind of quietly sit and wait. The occasional bird kind of moves through. You see a squirrel or two. Now can we move on, guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah I think I'm ready to get today started. You sure? You may, maybe you want to roll over and just need five more minutes? Hey, if you're going to give me five more minutes... About 8 a.m. or so. Pretty well lit now. Dappled light here in the woods. But you can see the glittering blue-green of the uh, the lake beyond. Nice it's place. Pretty. It's not bad. Yeah. If it weren't for the knolls, it'd be a nice place for a summer cottage. Have you guys, I don't know, just spotted anything that looked like old ruins? Because I haven't. No. No. Yep. Let's keep wandering around and away from the howling. Which you have not heard in a while. Yes, but we know where it came from. Let's keep wandering away from there. Are you just heading north, or...? North or Lee, and looking for ruins. Okay, uh, give me, um, give me a survival check, whoever's leading. Sixteen. Okay. Kind of follow the edge of the forest and the, the shore direction, north. After about an hour, kind of wondering, like, how far you're going to have to go, or, like, where you're going to have to be. Kind of stop and pause and look around. So, if she said it was northeast, should we continue along the coastline or cut in? How should we do this, Joe? Yeah, I think just along the coastline. I think so, too. If we get... <clears throat> okay, that, that's fine. I just think if we, if we haven't found any ruins by the end of the day, we should maybe uh, move inland some. Okay. Fair enough. Give me a uh, perception checks. Total of 20. Four. Eight. Grim, as you're kind of walking along, you, um, I notice that, you know, the, the rocks are not quite the same as what you had before. It's more kind of flat and pebbly and a couple boulders here and there. But you do see something that kind of stands out, kind of just in from the edge of shore to kind of grass. You see what looks like just jutting rock at first, but it, it looks almost like there are a few rocks that are more placed. And you kind of follow it out towards the water in a line, and you see that there are a few more out in the water. And this looks... The placement of it looks odd for a natural arrangement. Huh. I approach it immediately. As you kind of head over there, you look, and it's worn, and it's old, and it's mossy, but it's for sure person-placed stones. Hey guys, look at this. No, what did you find? 
I don't know. And I'll look at it, and does it look like there's one that I can move or push or... Hard to tell how big they actually are. They look like they're partially buried in the um, the dirt. Uh, they're about the size of what you can see is about the size of, like, a, a pack. Hmm. And there's a few of them around. Large-ish, yeah. What do you make of it? Like, it would be tough to pick it up and put it over your head. These these weren't just cast here by a mountain. Well, place the me them. You think it means something? I think it might. Exactly what? I do not know. I would like to investigate the rocks. All right. Uh, wow. Well, even with a minus one, I got a 17. You see the barest hint of what you would guess would be like some sort of workmanship. Maybe like um design carved or something in them, but it's so faded and so old that these almost just look like natural stones, but you can tell by just the edges that they were formed in some way they've worn away from that that more perfect form. Uh, They probably had squared edges that have now rounded out pretty significantly. Area has probably been flooded at some point in time. But there's a definite quote-unquote line or trail of them out into the water. Hmm. And also a few more towards kind of up the shore from the one that you're like at, but should I swim out there? Are you, are you a pretty good swimmer? Yeah. Yeah. Then by all means, I am not a good swimmer. Grim's going to follow the path the other way up out of the way from the water until it ends and then turn around and look. Okay. When you go into the woods a little bit, there's like a, uh, you thought it was just a rolling hill from where you were before, but now that you get a better vantage on it. It actually looks like some sort of mound. It's a little too symmetrical, a little too perfectly formed. And in kind of the shadow of the mound, there is a depression, and you see what looks to be, like, for lack of a better term, like a spear of stone, almost like a column, but worn away and ground down. So that instead of, like, a a column or some sort of totem, it's more of just, like, a um, kind of bullet-shaped, you know, like, kind of pointy, but not nicely pointy, just round, pitted. I approach it immediately. You're, you're at it, yeah. Oh, and it, just a big rock in the ground? Giant bullet-shaped plinth? It looks like it was some sort of, like, column, or, you know, like, you could imagine it was maybe, like, an obelisk-type type thing at some point in time. It, 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 yeah, that's just it. It looks like it has, like, tool marks. Uh, same as before, like, m- maybe there was something carved, and this could have been a totem, or a, uh, s- like, a not a statue, but some sort of monument of some sort. Not not naturally occurring. No, absolutely not. Okay, I want to I want to put my back to it and turn around and face back to where Madrax is swimming. More or less, there is a line of these these kind of rocks out. It looks like um like a foundation, and the rocks have shifted ever so slightly out of plumb, but they're mostly there. How far out do they go? Uh, the last one you see is like into the water. So whether they continue, actually beyond that, you're not sure. Where is Madrax? We haven't got into him yet, but he's probably like down to whatever skivvies or whatever he's wearing and wading out into the cold, frigid water. I presume he would have taken a few things off, uh, I'm guessing, which would have given you the plenty of time to do this. But but you do notice there's the mound, and there's a depression down into it as if there's a, you know, there's a place to be in the shadow of the mound. Oh. Like a little, like a gully. You know, like you could go down into... I want to be in that place. Let's switch over to Majorx real fast. All right, Majorx, you're getting ready for a, a swim. Toss off my backpack, and, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it. Just toss off my backpack and then go swimming. Okay, you kind of wait out a little bit and then put your head under and kind of push off. Immediately, there is a, like, large trout just kind of in your face, and as you kind of dive underwater, it spooks and kind of swims away, leaving a little bit of a trail. Uh, and this, as the silt kind of settles down, you see um, some more of these these stones, more rounded than even the ones on on land, with a definite kind of ripple pattern of the wear from the um, the, the waves and the, the tide. For about ten feet, they go out pretty regularly, and then after that, they almost kind of splay out into a cone, as if they've kind of just fallen more. And it looks like there's, um, it's very rocky, very bouldery and whatnot. None more than a certain size, but very scattered. Do they look like uh, road markers? No. They look like uh, like foundation stones or like construction stones that okay. fell away and were scattered into the water. 
and then have just been worn away over time. And you see lots of little plants and uh, fish darting here and there. Uh, it pretty quickly gets pretty deep. Like um, it goes from being like two feet at the shore and you kind of look gradual to being like three feet to suddenly being like six and then like to 12. Okay. Uh, I just want to clear some of the sediment around one of the stones, maybe a, maybe in that 12-foot area. Okay. Go ahead and give me a, um, just an athletics check to kind of swim down, see generally how much you can get done. 20. Okay. You swim down, um, you kind of grab onto one of the stones, play at the silt, and there's some, some kind of mossiness. Um, as you kind of move it, a, uh, a crab kind of scuttles out and kind of you know, walks away um, to get away. I grab it and eat it. All right. Uh, it's crunchy and um, delicious. Kind of briny. You get mostly just a mouthful of water, but uh, which dilutes the flavor, I, I will say. You're able to kind of clear away. It looks like the stone sits on another stone below it, and that one's mostly buried in the ground as if the foundation goes further down. You're actually able to kind of wiggle this stone a little bit. You could probably actually work it free and kind of push it over itself, but it, it, would, it wouldn't really go anywhere. And as you look, you can kind of see that um, here and there in the distance, you know, like maybe 10 feet from you and then like 30 feet from you, maintaining that line, there are a couple stones that look more stacked. Interesting. All right, I'll go back to the surface, See, kind of, kind of just wade there to see what their responses are. You see... um. Grim kind of looking out to shore, or out towards you. Not at you, but just kind of out in that direction. And then he kind of turns around, and then he kind of steps into the woods, and you see him immediately dip down and then kind of disappear after, like, two steps. Just completely out of sight. And Shay's just kind of, I'm guessing, wandering around the shore, kind of looking around. Yeah, I'm just chilling. Playing with, like, a fishbone or something like that. Poking it. <laughs> uh, like a crab carcass. <laughs> Madrax, you feel something brush up against your tail. I almost said fireball, uh, but I am out of fireballs. So, um, yeah, I'll just dive under and look and see if it's un- a mass of undead people. No, it's just uh, there's a couple, like, brim fish, you know, just little, like, lake fish swimming around. Yeah. Uh, give me a perception check. Oh, yay. Nine. You do see larger shadows just slightly moving kind of at the edge of your vision in the water. Uh, Down a little bit deeper, a little bit further away. Not people, shadows. Just long, like, oh, a little bit of shadow appeared, and then, oh, it went away. Yeah, I'll just swim back to shore. All right, grim. As you kind of enter this little this little gully or valley, you see that there is um, another of these kind of like obelisky stones at the other end of the mound, and then another one to the right. It almost looks like there are three mounds, and these three obelisks mark the space between the mounds. And then this kind of like little valley is formed in the empty space between the three mounds. Hmm. And up and to the left on this mound, there is actually like a threshold of these big stones. So like three big stones set into the mound. Two quasi-trapezoidal, worn away stones forming walls. And then a lintel piece across, and then the earth is just kind of packed up against it. And you can see down into, it's small, you'd have to duck in and kind of like huddle and, and crawl, but um, it appears to go down into the mound. Uh, slick stairs. Uh, you guys, up here, I think I found the way in, and then I'm going to head toward the entrance. Did we hear him? It depends on how loud he, shot, he said that. Uh, yeah. Ah, uh, hey guys, I'm over here. I'm gonna go down and do the thing. Shay, you would have heard him. Okay. Um, I'll shout to Madrax, sir. Madrax, sir. I think Grim found something. You look out at Madrax, and his little frill on his neck is kind of like like a little fin in the in the water, and then his tail is like a little fin, and there's a much larger fin behind him, just following him. A little. No, I'm kidding. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Madrax is kind of getting out of the water, kind of brushing off the water, shaking it free like a dog. Grabs his pack and all that. Grim, as you kind of reach down and kind of go inside, your night, your dark vision kicks in. Uh, it is pitch black inside once the light is. Um, and these stairs actually descend, and it's a stone, like a stone slab, 
uh, above you and these stairs kind of down. It's a little off kilter. It's probably shifted a little bit over time. Um, but it definitely looks like it goes down about 20 feet and then levels out. I want to investigate that slab you described. That's It's just like, you know, like when you're under stairs and it's just a flat slab or when you're... Do- doesn't look like it's going to slam shut behind me. It's the roof of the stairs. It's just following the, the slope of the stairs. And no, it does not look like it's mechanical. Still not reassuring me much. Uh, are my friends catching up? Not not yet. I'll like, tap my foot for a minute like, come on, guys. Over here. Hey, woo, woo, over here. A little centipede scuttles away all from your foot motions. Can I use thaumaturgy to be like, hey, over here, come on, come on. Get your butts over here. You could. I mean, you know they're they're. I mean, they're coming. They're just you immediately walked on. No, the actually, I probably should. I'm not going to do that because there are stupid things that want to bite us. I'll wait at the threshold. All right, they they catch up. As we're walking up, I'm uh, telling Shay that I found a whole bunch of lodestones. That's what they're called, right? Nope. Lodestone is a naturally occurring uh, magnetic uh, thing. Oh, okay. I mean, he, these are like uh, waystones, uh, just the foundation. So, I mean, they they look like a foundation of like a wall almost. All right, I'll I'll tell her that I found all these foundation stones, uh, out there, and that there's some something large, multiple large things in the lake. But you know, it's a big lake, so it is a big lake. Yeah. Hey guys, look at this. You hear the shout kind of echo weirdly muffled from inside the mound. You kind of poke your head around the into the hole, and you see Grim down a couple steps. You found a cave? Yeah, it's like a door. Check it out. I'm going in, and I go in. Major X, pretty quickly, Grim disappears from your vision. Shay, you can see him get to the bottom of the stairs. Grim, there is a tunnel ahead of you. Uh, you're still kind of, kind of stooping a little bit, but um, it looks like it uh, goes down into, the, like, the mound is more like the entryway, but then under what you probably just thought were hills is maybe a room beyond i'm going to draw my morning star and my shield and i'm going to glance over my shoulder with a grin as everybody kind of gets to the door and i'm going to say guys i think we found something and i'm going to start my way in okay as you step up towards the room you hear uh and feel something underfoot crunch and for a second, you're like, ah, oh, I stepped on that centipede. But it's the distinctive sound of um, glass breaking. Uh-oh. And you look down, and there's like a, um, you have stepped on like a vial, just a thin vial of glass. But it is completely sealed. It doesn't have like a cork on it. It's just like a, a rod of glass. As you kind of look at it for a second, you you realize that this is, um, you've seen these before. They're an alchemy device used for light. Uh-oh. Kind of like one of those little sticks that you crack and shake. It's it's that, essentially. A sun wow. rod? Uh, yeah, essentially. I'm going to proceed more carefully and check for artifacts and traps. Uh, go ahead and give me a um, perception check. 16. You see another two of these vials right at the threshold of the door, but you don't see anything that you think is a trap. But it occurs to you that these are not as ancient as this ruin. And they're spent, right? Oh, uh, yeah, they're old. Like, all, all of what was inside them. So, someone's been here before us. So what these do is, uh, they're like a liquid that's filmed, and you do, um, you activate them, and then they essentially turn into a mist that, like, just kind of chemical reacts on itself and reacts for a, a while, about an hour, and then afterwards the mist kind of dissipates, and so the light fades, but the, the, the um, gas is still there. Uh, these look like the gas has gone so completely inert that it's basically, like, leached through the glass. So these have been here for a couple years. We're obviously yeah. not the first ones here. Which tracks with what Minerva told you. Still on the right track, guys. All right, so you walk in uh, to this room, and it opens, and it's about a 20 by 20 room. And at the center, there is a plinth with what looks like a sarcophagus on it. Not like a Egyptian sarcophagus that's, like, form-fitted, but more like a um, a box that did have a relief of some sort on it. It has been shifted over and is actually cracked on the ground in a couple pieces uh, so that the, the thing is open. Uh-oh. Uh, when we enter, I do light a torch. 
because I don't have any sort of dark vision. Yeah. And I'm I'm gonna try to be the last in line as well. Yeah. Torch sputters and like spits as it kind of like it does a because you have to hunch so the flame is like licking against the um the stone. Yeah. Uh, lighting the occasional lichen, kind of burning it away and whatnot. Hmm. It looks like uh there are some remnants of like shattered pottery in a corner. Some debris that looks like it may have at one point in time been some sort of like wooden something like maybe there was furniture in here but these ruins are thousands of years old so anything that was in here probably faded uh and anything that didn't disintegrate from time looks like it may have been taken Mm. in the um the four or the three walls i'm sorry because you entered through the one there do appear to be like little alcoves kind of carved out they're inset slightly like a couple inches and then at about Rib height, there is like a little shelf with a depression in it, and that is more inset. That's like a a foot deep alcove, and that's in each of the three walls. I would like that shelf to know that I appreciate it and that it's loved and cared for, and that if it needs to talk, that I'm a place it can turn. Okay. There is a depression in it. Yeah. And then we'll move on. Okay. I would uh like to try to piece together the sarcophagus lid to see what's on it. Okay, you might need help from Grim. Oh, sure. I'll help you lift the sarcophagus lid. Yeah, you take like a couple pieces, you're able to flip over the one, one that's upside down. It looks like a carving. Um, it is worn away uh, a little bit, but it hasn't been exposed to the elements because it's down here under underground. And you imagine that it was potentially sealed at some point in time. It looks like a human carved, close-eyed, fairly detailed, but not, like, so advanced technique as to be, like, crazy detailed, and not carved via magic or anything like that, but it is wearing the motif of, like, armor, and it has a shield, two hands over a shield, and this is just in such, like, bare relief, like, it's not a fully 3D image, it's just kind of, like, reliefed in. The hands are on a shield, and the shield, um, it's like a big kite shield, has uh, the motif of a man with, um, I'm just kind of saying, with both feet together, to- uh, toes pointed slightly down, like a, almost like floating in air, arms outstretched but down with palms showing, and the head has a slightly squared off, almost like it's shown to be wearing a helmet, and the helmet has two horns coming out of it, like a, almost like Loki's helmet from um, Avengers. Hmm. Hmm. Is there anything inside the sarcophagus? There is not. Uh oh. No remains? There's nothing? Nothing. Ooh, that's not good. It's a good thing mummies are only in the desert. Uh, does this sarcophagus happen to look like it might be the official type dude that we're looking for? Unsure. Mm. Enough care was given that this person has, you know, a nicely carved. Wouldn't it just be our luck if we had to, like, actually face off against some giant undead motherfucker to get the three pieces we need to take back for our money? Sounds like our luck. Like he's wearing two of them and fighting with the with the third? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do, do any of us know about, about the Daxian Empire? Probably some stories and whatnot. It'd be the same as us knowing about, like, Babylon. You know, that, that kind of era of story. That would be essentially the, um sword and sandal version of this world. You know, the more, more Conan-esque. Conan-esque. I mean, it, 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 is there any other passages out of here? No, it is just the room. So we we found a room in the ground. Yes. Mm. No, there's got to be secret passages out of here, guys. Come on. It can't all be big dungeons. Got to yeah. be. Got to be something. I want to check the walls and alcoves for, like, a secret door or something. Sure. Uh, investigation if you're going to get all up in it. All right. Ooh, 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 11. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the little basins appear to have a little hole at the center, maybe some sort of feed into or whatever, but uh, that's about it. It doesn't look like a sconce or anything, right? It kind of does, actually. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you imagine this alcove maybe housed something at some point in time, like on the wall. You see like little pitting on the the flat part of the alcove above this. So there might have been like um you know some sort of decorative piece or relic or something in the alcove that's gone now. That's impossible to tell. No, like burning on the walls or ceiling from torches. No. Hmm. Okay. 
All right. I I'm done in here. Anyone else? But remember, they had the other people had the the alchemical rods, lumen sticks. Looking around, I don't see anything in this room either, right? Nothing that jumps out at you. No, you'd have to kind of get in and really check around to see if there was anything. I want to investigate. I want to really get in. What are you investigating? I want to, uh, hmm. So there's, there's, uh, it's just like a big empty room with alcoves. Yes. I want to investigate the center of the room first. And if there's nothing there, then work my way around the alcoves. Okay, the center of the room is the sarcophagus. That's where I want to start. There's about, it's sarcophagus and about three to four feet before the wall. I want to check out sarcophagus. Okay. Oh, nat 20. For investigation? Well, it w- with investigation, it would actually be a 19. Yeah. But but it was a nat 20. Yeah. It looks as if this plinth is not carved from solid stone down into the like into the ground. Um, this is not a carved away space. This is a built up space. So this sits on the sarcophagus. There's a doorbell uh, camera. What? I'm just wondering if there's like a there's a doorbell camera or some other way that I know this might be an entrance to something. Yeah. No. Okay. No. Maybe. Mm. I mean, there may be something on the sarcophagus. Mm? But um, mm. it's certainly something that was placed here mm. rather than having been like carved from a solid thing. It's multiple pieces. Sarcophagus on plinth. Plinth on. Plinth on floor. So it is a stone floor. It is dusty and there's dirt here from potentially where rains have run mud down into it. But as you kind of look around, you do see that on the ground, just barely, you see that between the stones of the floor, which are not arrayed in like an alternating pattern, they are arrayed like square next to square next to square, and then next layer square, 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 so that all the grout lines match up, right? From the center of the sarcophagus to the alcove on the wall, the grout line appears a little bit bigger than the ones, and is not is not grouted in. It is more like a channel through. Mm. Mm-hmm. And that goes into the plinth. Ah. Uh, guys, I found a puzzle lock key puzzle thing. Come check this out. I'm not very good at puzzles. What does it want from us? Does it look like we could push the a piece of the plinth or something away up the channel to slide it out of the way and, and expose an entryway? I mean, with enough strength, you could potentially move the the plinth that has nothing to do with the channels, though. They're not like, um... Oh, I thought they were leading away from the plinth. They lead from the alcoves to the, the plinth, just in the ground. Ah, in the alcoves. Yeah, but you notice it's just... It's not like a, a line that goes up the walls or anything like that. It's just where there would be a grout line. Very specifically, there is not a grout line here. It is a thicker space between the stones so that it forms a channel. And that disappears into the wall of the alcove and into the edge of the plinth. I have a question. The water that I swam in, that was fresh water, no no contagions or anything, right? Still haven't really figured out whether those should, should be salt water. I've been treating them as f- freshwater lakes, and I think they are freshwater. Okay, I just want to make sure. Now, you, there might, you might have bacterial parasites, but, <laughs> yeah, they're freshwater. Okay. Um, all right, then. I am going to take my water skin... Which I assume is relatively full. Yeah. And I'm going to pour it down one of the holes in the depressions. Okay. You know, that initial pour kind of goes directly down it and disappears. And then as you kind of pour a little bit more, it starts to pull up around the edge. And, and for a second, then it drains. And you kind of hear hear the water kind of trickling through. But you do not see it go through the channel. Which is, I presume, what you were expecting. Yeah. Yeah, the water does not go through the channel. Hmm. Then I charge and tackle the plinth. Uh, roll an athletics check. Ooh, pretty good. Uh, 19. You, uh, crash really hard into it, and it does not move. It's a big, it's a big boy. Uh, should I, what should I do, guys? What do I do? That's everything I was thinking of, so... I could pour acid, I could shoot acid down one of the things. Just vomit into the sink. Yeah, basically. Shay? I have no idea. Absolutely no idea. Is there anything in the alcove? I mean, no. Just an alcove. If there was anything, it's been looted, yeah. 
There are slight, like, scrape marks. Does it look like it's plinth-sized? What? Does it look... Is the alcove plinth-sized? No, not even remotely the same size. No, the plinth is maybe, like, um, seven feet long by, like, four feet wide, while the uh, the alcoves are, like, a foot across and, like, four or five feet high. Hmm. Now, did you say there were other mounds? There are two other mounds, yeah. N- noticeable once you get down into it. You're like, oh, there are two more of these. Should we investigate those and while we're thinking about this? Worth a try. Okay. All right, so you, you leave? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put one of the torches in the depression, my my the lit torch. Okay. D- does it, like, stay in there pretty well? You hear a... Um... Uh, no, no, it would not, because, uh, you would, it, there's no, you would have to, like, lean it up against a wall or something. Oh. But if you, t- like, as you kind of, like, touch the, I, are you, like, trying to, like, light the depression? No, I was just... Like, sticking the fire end in that, or? No, I was just trying to wedge it in there so that it would, so that it would keep the room lit for when we got back. The, the hole is about the size of, um, like a straw. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, it's, it's tiny. The depre- the... If you put, like, the base of the torch in the depression, it would hold against the, the edge of the bowl and the wall, but you'd have to lean it against the wall. But, I mean, yeah, it would stay. All right. Never mind. I hate puzzles so much. Well, maybe the other ones have some clues for us. Yeah. We might as well look. So you go up, out, and into the the kind of the open area again? Yes. Okay. As you're looking at the other two mounds... They do not have the entrances that this one does facing into this uh, gully, or into the little valley between them. No. Hey, you, you just see two mounds. What do you What do you want to do? Get a shovel. <laughs> <laughs> Are we sure we can't push or pull something through here? All right, try maybe, with all... Maybe we have to get one of those knolls and fill this channel with blood. Dark. Okay. Okay, let's go. I'm gonna go back down into the first mound. Uh, I would, I would like Shay to make a history check, actually. Damn. That does sound dark, but you also know that all stories about the Daxian Empire are ones of like brutal iron rule. So, you're like, that's off. Eh. <laughs> that's not you thinking the the that is the answer. It's like, no. Eh, I mean, Daxian Empire considered evil. That's fair. Blood will work, or blood might work. I don't think he has an opinion either. Uh, I don't think Shay has an opinion either way. Just important to note that it was a brutal empire that conquered other people, had millions of slaves, and the aristocracy was basically the entire actual citizen population. Everyone else was basically disposable. Well, I'm going to try it. I'm going back into that first mound over a depression I did not pour the water into. Okay. And I'm gonna cut my hand over it, wring it out. Okay. The first couple drops hit the um the basin and they kinda of sit there for a second and then the drop hits the the hole and kind of flows down into it. And then immediately the drops that had hit the basin flow like water down into the um down into the hole and drain away. I try it at the next depression. Same thing. Except it immediately just starts flowing down. There's no pause. And the last one I poured the water down into? Same thing. So you've poured, you know, probably just a little bit, because obviously I, I don't think you hurt yourself too much. But it's, uh, hopefully you're not doing the supernatural thing where it's like, hey, every day let's determine whether we're werewolves and cut the palm of our hand open terribly. Yeah, I mean, I did cut the palm of my hand open, so it's probably some damage. Yeah, I'm going to say you take one point of damage, but you get a good amount into at least one of the depressions if you want to stand there and kind of like milk it for a minute. And uh, after kind of a few seconds of, of the blood pouring in, you know, more than just a couple of drops, but more like um, not a flow because that'd, that'd be bad. But, um, you know, it kind of it kind of you see that the, the channel or the little hole has filled a little bit. And there's just a little bit of a it kind of pulls out around and kind of settles into just a just a bead at the top of the hole. And as you look, the channel where the grout line should be just at the very bottom has turned red. Are you two in here, Shay and Grim? Yep. Just stab them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not the DM right now. Um, 
Let's go find ourselves a knoll. For the bleeding? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Major X takes his hand off, like, takes off the pressure and is like, guys, we did it! High five! Poof, and just <laughs> blood everywhere. Splatter. <laughs> uh, okay. You bandage that or whatever and walk up and out into the daylight. How do, how do we attract a knoll again? Here, boy, here! Wait, aren't there two corpses out here somewhere? I mean, like, an hour and a half back at the rocks, but yeah. Uh, they're ways away. Hmm. Shady, you got any idea? Come here, crazy gnolls, come and kill us! Hello! That's not working. Don't we just get some fish from the lake or something? Do fish have blood? Not a lot. But they got some. You can try. So do squirrels. I imagine Majorx swims back into the water, comes back with like a mermaid. Like, I found this guy, <laughs> <laughs> just dead. That's got some blood. I mean, yeah, uh, I'm up for anything you guys want to try, but blood is obviously having an effect on this, uh, in this chamber. Boy, what I wouldn't give for one of those, like, briar hogs now. Right? Uh, yeah, with the three of us, we should be able to lock, uh, one of those gnoll bodies with the back. I guess if we find something in between now and then, great. If not, we might as well lug one back and bleed it dry. Yeah. Are we going to be able to carry one over those uh, craggy rocks? It will be very difficult. and take you a while. Well, it's we can drag it. It's not like we have to protect it. Or we could bleed it out into, like, our... My water skin is... Water here. skins, yeah. And then we go dump the blood. It's unfortunate that... Highest order. It's unfortunate that it's dead, though. Dead things mm-hmm. don't bleed very well. We would have to hang it upside down and cut it open for a while. Yeah. I'm guessing neither of you are good at hunting or tracking. Ah, yeah, no. Not at all. Yeah, I'm really bad at it. Damn it, Finn. I don't know that he's good at it either, actually. What about that bird? One bird. One drop of water. (laughs) Or blood. Two drop of blood. Shay, do you know if they did living sacrifices in the Daxian Empire? Uh, yes. Yes, I know. And actually, you you might know that, too. <laughs> I know, but I'm not going to tell. <laughs> yeah, I, I think so. Uh-huh. so yeah, yeah, it may man. have to be living warm blood. It's important to note that I say yes, not as, like, definitively that is the history of Terra canonically take this to the bank. That is yes for Shay. I just, not that I'm correcting it, it may, but... I just want that to be clear when I answer a question like that. It is for the character. Well, it's the only info we have, so let's go with it. All right. Head back and look for a live knoll. Bait him back in. Is there any way I could improvise, like, a trap in here in case someone else comes in? I don't know what you have on you, but you can definitely try to. All right. So I have I have 50 feet of rope and uh, these broken bits of sarcophagus. Um... There's got to be something I can do. Yeah, a rope is pretty obvious for a trip wire. Okay, I, I don't think I can. I'm not. I'm not good at that stuff anyway. Hey, it just needs a, a spell that's gonna explode on someone. We, you know what we should do, you guys? We should make camp and wait to get attacked. Like, I mean, we could wander around all day. We suck at hunting. The one thing we're really good at is being bait. That's not completely unreasonable, but our track record. Just saying, we, we make a small campfire, we roll out some bedrolls, we get comfy, and something is bound to come along and attack us that we can bleed in the in the cavern. Okay. Yeah, I think that's the best shot we've got. So no need to be quiet. We can just make camp and wait for something to attack. It's a bit meta, but okay. <laughs> All right, so you make a camp out on the shore? Uh, I would say as close to the entrance of that cavern as we can, so when we capture something, we don't have to drag it very far. Yeah, but that's pretty well out of sight, right? Compared to... It's into the, it's into the woods a little bit, yeah. But we make a campfire, we make a little noise, a little hooting and hollering and laughing, something will find us. Hopefully not a mind flare, but something. What's a mind flare? You don't want to know. Okay. Make a nice big fire, then. Mmm, yeah. <laughs> and that's how the woods burn down. 
All right. It's not a bad idea, actually. You set up false camp at, like, you know, not even midday. Now, hold on. I have a bunch of clothes. All right. Why don't we try to make a scarecrow at this camp? And then we can camp like 30 feet away in the brush. Like a decoy? Yeah. Okay. Scarecrows aren't decoys. They're supposed to scare things away. Only crows. We're not trying to catch a crow. Yeah. Okay. So I will take my brand new clothes out. Okay. And, uh,. We'll stuff them full of brush. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to ask for an arts and crafts check. I mean, essentially, I'm going to say survival checks from anyone making these scarecrows. Well, actually, no. Okay. If you are trained in deception, you may use your proficiency bonus. I got a 20 in survival. Okay. Yeah, he's making it. I'm I'm terrible at this shit. It's why I left the desert. <laughs> you made a lot of scarecrows in the desert. Everyone's like, "What are you doing?" Grim is very crafty. <laughs> he's like, "No, guys, it's like this." He he like sings a little song while he's stitching the clothes together. Yeah, no, you uh, make a pretty reasonable little uh, little madrax and shove him into. Uh, well, you don't have bed rolls as you as you have told me. Just stand him right up by the fire like he's warming himself, yeah. but not too close. <laughs> Ah, uh, almost heroes. <laughs> Stop dropping roll, straw madrax. The um, yeah, no, you set up a little a little camp, and then you go you know thirty feet away, and you sit and wait. This is gonna work. At what intervals should I pause the sitting and waiting? As thirty minutes goes by, and nothing happens. An hour goes by, nothing happens. Grim I'm gonna go sleep. I'm going to go refill my water skin at that point. Majorax walks to the water, immediately attacked by Nulls. Just, huh, it worked! I did it, guys! I did something right! I'm just torn apart and carted away. That mermaid that we were talking about earlier just drags <laughs> you into the water. Maybe throw some food into the fire. You know, get that smell of... Uh... Get that smell going? Yeah. Burn some oh. bacon. It turns to early afternoon. Uh, you have now thrown greasy meat onto the fire in hopes of having to attract. Shay, go ahead and roll a d12. This should be 12. Two. Okay. It's around three in the afternoon now, and you have to go kind of stoke the fire a little bit more, more wood on it. The whole area smells a little bit like um, campfire smoke, but uh, you still don't see anything. I'm thinking what else we could sacrifice for this plan. I'm big on sacrifice. The more you sacrifice, the more willing I am to give bonuses to things. Okay. Whose idea was the scarecrow? Was that Madrex? Yeah. Yeah. You can have uh, inspiration for that because it made me giggle. Yeah. Plus, I think it's I think it does make sense as a Madrex thing to do. Like, oh, guys, we're gonna make scarecrows. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's it's about three. I don't know. Uh, are you guys just gonna continue on? You've you've been like lying still for like four hours, just kind of milling around. I'm gonna shoot some fire bolts up into the uh into the air through the canopy, or are you gonna move out a little bit and then? Yeah, I'll I'll move out closer to the yeah closer to the shore. <laughs> I'll tell you later in case it happens. Roll a uh, d12. Three. Okay. That one missed a little bit. Kind of just scatters across the the shore because you're just kind of at this point bored. Oh yeah, definitely skipping firebolts across the across the stream. Another hour passes. Yeah, the sun's pretty well past. We're over to the other side now, hitting you know, those orangey lights through the through the trees. Shifted the way the light hits the these little burial mound things. The obelisks are now casting their shadows, reaching across. I'm sorry. Do they have any writing on them? None that's legible. Okay. If they did have any sort of carving, it's it's long gone. Grim, go ahead and roll me a d12. Twelve is this one. Four. <laughs> Two, three, four. No, nothing. You see nothing. Five o'clock now, and you haven't heard birds or seen squirrels or anything in a while. Every once in a while, you'll kind of hear something like "group" at the the water in the lake. Look over just in Tennessee, a little bit of a ripple. Guys, I'm getting hungry. 
Yeah, especially with the smell of, you know, the meat scraps you occasionally throw at the fire. Think you think I can make like a um like a fishing line and make a throw out while we wait? For the knolls? At the fire? <laughs> no, for in the lake. Uh, it would have to be a very, very long fishing line. We have rope. Uh you probably have some form of fishing gear that's, you know, relatively simple string and hooks and whatnot that you could probably try to set a line somewhere. But to control it all the way from back of the woods would be a little tough. Oh, no. I'll just sit by the water, though. It's just going to take a while anyway. Uh, yeah. Okay. Is the water more than 60 feet away? Yes. Oh. It's oh, about 60. I was going to say, I could cast Spiritual Weapon and get, like, a long halberd. We could attach the line to that, but... I kind of think we just go through it. <laughs> uh, damn it. Come on, try again. Damn it. Yeah. Uh, roll a survival check as you start to fish. 16. Okay. Give me a perception check. Three. Okay. You feel a slight tug on the line after probably about uh, ten minutes. Kind of like casting it out, waiting a little bit, cast it out. Ooh. And you tug it back, and you feel it catch and pop away, and you see a, a fish dart, dart away with your bait. I eldritch blast it. <laughs> Uh, roll with disadvantage. Fourteen. You, um, right through the fish, just obliterating, and then kind of, like, rises up probably about twenty feet away from the shore, and kind of bobs. Uh, fairly well obliterated. I'll just, uh, dump whatever stuff I don't want to get wet, and we spark the bones and what have you, and I'll just strip down a bit and jump in to go get it. Okay. You kind of grab it by its tail as you get close and pull it, and it kind of just falls apart. The head kind of goes over there. The tail kind of goes over here. A little pool of blood, a little cloud of blood around you. That's fitting. It was not a big fish. Ew. But hey, look. Blood. Well, that's a start. Now we just need to get it from the lake into uh, the thing. I'd say we were making progress. It's a, it's a good start. Meanwhile, at the camp, I'm trying to convince Grim to let me set the west edge of the forest on fire. I really don't think you understand the full scope of what you're, you're what you're suggesting here. This is not a good plan. This, but we're gonna push everything this way. Something will come by. No, you, but but if if it goes unchecked, it could destroy everything in its path. Okay. Besides, if you start the fire here. It's going to drive everything away from here. No, no, I'm talking about past the mounds to the west. And it'll just drive everything that direction away. The fire will chase it. All of it. And us. Shay, you're kind of just sun-toasting, basking in the evening sun. You feel another tug on your string. This time you pull and you catch a small trout on your little hook. You gather up your things and head back to camp. Oh, presumably head back to camp with your fish. I don't know. Sure. Look, guys. Guys, look. The fish is probably about the size of her um, her forearm. Pretty decent size for, like, a, a meal. Good job, Shay. Tell, Thanks, Dra- but... Tell Madrax you can't set the forest on fire. Madrax, you can't set the forest on fire. See, I told you. <sighs> so what did you guys catch? A headache. Probably a cold. <laughs> Shay, as you approach the their little camp again uh, and kind of look at the, you know, there's the fire... And the setting sun casting the shadow um, around the thing. No, make a perception check, please. I'm trying to roll, you know, higher than a five. I feel like it's going to be a six. Nine. Nope, it's just you look around the camp or around the little fake. You see the straw men, fire kind of casting across their faces a little bit. You see the obelisks with their shadows pointing west, as you would expect. Nothing seems out of place there. And you walk over to with your fish to uh, Grim and Madrex. Majrax is currently lightly bump butting his head against the tree. It's about six thirty, seven o'clock. The sun's getting real low. Orange light kind of cast everywhere. You get kind of that uh, that sharp brightness through the the trees where like just the because it's such a tight pinpoint of light. Fire starting to cast a real particular gro- glow across the the ground, but still no no sounds of imminent war band or it's like they know we want them to come here and bleed i know right says the knoll right behind you no 
That would have been cool. <laughs> just imagine it's like Grim on a little edge of a hill, Shay kind of looking her over, and Majrax just like slumped there, like looking, and then like a null face. <laughs> what you guys looking at? No, that's not what happened. But I like this idea. So you're just going to wait here until dark. And then I guess sleep for the night? No? Yes? I think we yeah. should. Yeah, we, I, I, we got a camp. We got a fire. We got this really nice Madrax doll. Well, are you are you getting up on the camp in the fire now, or are you still kind of thirty feet away, where it's cold and dank? I think we ought to camp by the fire. I'm gonna come up and slaughter everyone but the. We should probably not even worry about a lookout. We should just all go to sleep. <laughs> you should just the, the scarecrows. We'll let the scarecrow scare away the mean things. Madrax is gonna recast uh, mage armor for the night. Yeah, this has been a while. <laughs> All right. Anyone want to do anything else before it gets dark or before you guys kind of hunker in? Give out a big draconic yell. You hear it kind of echo a little bit, and the last little vestiges of birds possibly roosting down in the area caw and kind of go away. I'll take per- first watch again. Good night, John Boy. <laughs> as soon as they're asleep, though, I am moving away from the fire. <laughs> okay. I'll keep an eye on it, but I am not going to be up on it. Leaving us as bait. Moving north. He's taking the Majrax doll with him. No, no, so that... All the Majraxes will be safe. He's gonna, it's just him and the doll spooning off in the woods. That's the rest of our campaign. Because <laughs> everyone else is dead. No, the the doll is staying there with them. This whole campaign has just been Majrax playing with straw dolls of each of us. I told you never to come in here while I'm playing with my doll. <laughs> and then, and then, the Grim doll was like, let's just sleep here for the night. <laughs> I'm going to cut over for a moment as you guys lay down. Fen is out in the square of town. It's dark. Little streetlights are lit. Looking around. Guys? Guys? <laughs> All right. Cut back to... All right. Cut back to you guys. Majrax, give me a perception check as you kind of survey the landscape. Why do you hate me so much? That's the, like, the biggest check in the game. Why can't, why, that's what you make when you're on watch. I could use your passive perception, but I think that's negative. I got a 12, which isn't bad for me. That's not bad. Do you have a negative 2 wisdom? Yes. Okay. That makes sense, actually. Yeah, no, it's, it's very in character. Very well designed. You? Should have been in a fucking light with bullets on fire. Can't see much past the fire to the south. Uh, it pretty well blinds you to anything beyond it. I can see their bodies, though, right? Yes, yes. Okay, cool. You can see everything that's around the fire. You just can't see really past up the mound any. The fire's pretty pretty well going now. It's been stoked a lot. You guys set it up pretty well. You do hear the occasional splash in the water, just like kind of the same fish gulp. Every once in a while, a little bit bigger than you would expect, and you kind of look over. You don't really see anything. The moonlight kind of plays on little crests of waves. They're kind of like... It's a nice little breeze. You smell the smoke of the fire. You know that it's got to be carrying at least somewhat south, even though the breeze seems to be carrying it mostly west. But dogs have good noses, and gnolls look like dogs, so maybe maybe that helps. Now, about three hours go by of you being on watch without you seeing anything happening. I will uh, sneak around. I want to try to stay as hidden as possible and sneak around to the south of the fire. Like, we set it north of the mound, right? Yeah. Okay, so I want to kind of sneak around to the south side of the mound. Okay. Give me, give me, go ahead and give me a stealth check just to, okay. if you're going to be sneaky. Moving about half pace and all that. Six. Okay. <laughs> you are, um, just crunching on a lot of a lot of leaves and twigs and whatnot, but you do your like your stop. You look around. You like take a big step, a small a crunch, big step, small crunch. You stub your toe and start swearing a little bit and quiet yourself. But you make it to. Do you want to go completely to the south side of the mound, or just like kind of like up on the mound on the south side of the, the camp and look around? I prefer to go around it than over it. Okay. Uh, shore side or west side? Shore side. Okay. Just more open on your on your left is really the, the key there. Yeah. Uh, give me a perception check as you kind of search around and scan. Oh, I'm going to switch die. I'm going to switch die. I'm going to do it. 
Oh my god, I rolled a one. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a negative one in total? Yes, it is. That's yes, awesome. Is. And I'm very happy. I can't smell anything but the fire and the water. and You ain't found shit. With a negative one, I don't think you can smell the fire. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. You can't smell your own nose. You are. You've actually gone blind now. <laughs> your nose blind. <laughs> this is not the first time you've perception checked your character into oblivion. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's what this character's good at. This is so good at. It. Uh, okay. <laughs> no, you you do not see anything. Of interest. You barely see, like... It's... There's a moon, but it's not a lot of light. <laughs> like, and you swear you could smell it? <laughs> you've been near that fire for so long that all you can smell is smoke. Alright. Um, so yeah, I'll head back to the camp to wake whoever was on second watch. I presume Shay. I do, yep. too. So I violently shake her. <laughs> hey, wake up. It's time for your watch. Oh, uh, what? Okay. You. Can't you ever just wake me up normally? That is how you wake people up normally. I disagree. Next time, try a fireball. All right, Shay, you wake up and you look around. You see, at minimum, 12 gnolls surrounding the camp with longbows. No, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 I, did, I did really want one of those random encounter dice because I was really debating it have an owlbear approach, but I really wanted him to tell you guys that only you could prevent forest fires. <laughs> yes! Oh, no, no, wait, wait, wait. Only who can prevent forest fires? Smokey the owlbear. Fuck yeah. Smoky? Smell? Smell? It's fine. He needs, he needs to give us, like, stickers to put on things, and I want a hat. <laughs> McGruff the crime knoll. Okay. <laughs> moving, moving on. All right. Shay, what are you going to do with your, your watch? Got about three hours to kill. Somewhere around midnight now. Just so you know, I'm not going to sleep. No. Just... I'm just going to pretend to be asleep. I'm just lying down, looking in, like, a direction, or... Grim, on the other hand, is pretending to pretend to be asleep. Well, if he's going to pretend to be asleep, then I'm going to pretend to be awake. <laughs> okay. No, I'll just sit by the fire, stoke it a bit, and, um, I don't know, carve some wood or something. Whittle. Okay, give me a perception check. And a whittling check. Two. All right, just for the record, when you guys think that there are long stretches where nothing happens, that is not my fault. Lots of things are happening. You just know nothing about it. It's not, it's not my fault that our world is shitty. <laughs> Goddamn dice. You need to play only classes that allow you to get, like, a plus 14 to skills. As you're kind of, like, staring into the fire... You get just this weird kind of feeling and a chill up your spine as just like the dancing lights and shadows kind of play over the ground in front of you and your feet. And as you kind of like look around, like the Madrax doll, like every once in a while you just swear it's like smiling at you and staring. And that's actually Madrax pretending to be asleep. And then you kind of, okay, you, you, you coax yourself back and you're, you're okay. But then the Madrax doll on the other side actually does kind of look like it's Smiling at you, but then it's not, and then the shadows flicker away as the the fire light continues. What's so funny? Can I ask the doll? Got nothing better to do. I'm gonna pick a fight with the doll. Yeah, that makes sense. There is a low gust of wind that kind of just like breezes past your ear, just like weirdly tickles at your at your ear, and the the fire kind of sputters and, like, floofs in the other direction, away from you, along with the breeze. We have wind do we have around here. It is at this point. So you, just, so you can hear them. You hear a whoop, and an arrow hits the log next to you that you're sitting. And you go, whoa, because the two was very awful. And also they rolled really well for stealth. And then a 17 for the second arrow. Yeah, that, that'll do. Roll initiative, including the sleeping and not-so-sleeping. 
And no, you do not count as having a long rest. Oh, shit. I got a four. Uh, how much damage did I took? Oh, yeah, I didn't do that yet. Uh, a very long arrow, like, <laughs> prods into your, your shoulder. You take seven damage. Ouch. And you feel, like, slowed in a way. Not, like, a magical way, just, like, it kind of, just the way it hit you kind of tangled you a little bit, so you have ten fewer speed than you normally would have. Okay. Which is just a property of the weapon, but it's, I probably should have shot you in the leg or something like that. Okay, let's see. Oh, what call them? Uh, the late, late Shea Western roll a four. <laughs> are you at a, are you at zero? No, no, not yet. Oh, okay. So Grim and Shea both have a four. Yep. <clears throat> I got a 23. Hey! That's not, that's not bad. Best initiative ever. Save us, Madrax! Well, what? you are not asleep, correct? No, I'm not. So you simply will not act in the surprise round, and then you'll need to use your movement to stand up. And get ready. Um, the, uh, uh, la. they, they rolled well over a 20 to, to, to stealth up on the party, which is why. Um, okay, the other gnolls, um, an arrow thwips through the head of the Madrax doll. No, Madrax doll! An arrow punches right through some vital portion of, of Grimm's bedroll, or Grimm's non-bedroll Grimm. So you're gonna take... Uh, only four damage, but you are also slowed by ten feet. Ow. Um, that does wake you up. What? Huh? And ow. <laughs> what is your armor with mage armor? Mine? Yeah. Sixteen. Sixteen? All right, so this does hit you. Um, you take an arrow. Do I have my reaction? Do you have a reaction during a surprise round? Uh, no. Okay. Then no. Uh, you take ten damage. That hit hard. Second arrow thwips, like, literally next to your head into the ground. And then Shay, another arrow hits you in the thigh, and another one hits you in, like, the gut. So you take another two arrows for a total of 11 damage. I presume you don't lose speed for each of these, but it doesn't say you don't. So I think the idea of these is it hits you and it, like, is designed to slow you so they can catch up. So I'm gonna say your speed is at uh it's essentially at zero. You can you can stand, but you're not gonna really be able to move around a lot. Okay. Top of initiative. Madrax. You're gonna want your turn to count. Just throwing it out there. What do I see? Perception check. Oh, are you kidding me? Yes. Uh oh shit! I rolled an eighteen, so that's a sixteen. Okay. You see at the edge of, like, kind of up in the mound and a couple other places, there are four knolls with lawn bows. Two mostly south of the party, and then two mostly west of the party. They are about, the ones south of the party are about 30 feet away, the ones west of the party about 50 feet away. Are they, are they side by side or No, they are 15, they are 15 feet away from each other in both positions. Okay, cool. They're like half net to, to catch up. Okay, so, first off, Healing word. Oh, shit, I'm really low on spells. All right, so what do I got? I got one level two healing word for twinning it on myself and Jay. So I get a whopping six, while Shay gets max of 12. Nice. Thank you. Majrax is good to his friends. Very self-deprecating, though. Okay, so... um. I'm gonna run up, t- or I'm gonna run towards the ones to the south. Okay, uh, remember your speed is reduced by 10, cause you were shot. Oh, I, I forgot about that. And you stood up, so you lost half your movement. So I only got 10 feet. How close is, how close are the two to the south? From you, about 30, 35 feet, somewhere in there. It kinda depends on which side of the fire you were on. I imagine the north side of it. So yeah, 35-ish. Okay, that's too far for that. So I will, I can do that, I can do that. I'm going to use my last sorcery point to twin 
Firebolt. Okay. And I'm going to, uh, I have to hit different targets with it. That's the problem. So I'm going to target both of the ones to the south. Okay. First one. Second one. First one is a 22 to hit. And the second one is a 25 to hit. Those both miss. No, I'm sorry. I'm kidding. Go ahead and roll. Okay. First one is 13 damage. God, nice. Second one is 6 damage. Okay. And I am, am I interposed between Shay and the so- southern ones? No, you are on the other side of the fire from the ones on the south. Okay. Shay is on the shore side of the fire. In my head okay. canon, you can correct me if this is, I imagine Shay has her back to the shore, but okay. that's just how I imagine this. That doesn't have to be accurate. Okay. Well, I am moving towards Shay's side. Okay. So you can get pretty much up to Shay. So now that you're standing next to Shay. Okay. Cool. All right. The gnolls go. They are no longer hidden from Shay or Madrax. Grim hasn't seen them yet, but they have too many targets, so this is going to be a lot of rolling versus you guys. The two on the south are going to shoot at um, Madrax. The one fif- rolls a 15 and a 10. The second rolls a 20 and an 8. So the 20. I will use my last spell slot for shield. Okay. So he will miss. The two across the way are going to shoot at Shay. That is a 19 and a 14. So one of those will hit. And the second one rolls an 18 and a 9. So two of these are going to hit Shay for 10 total. Okay. Getting lucky on that second roll. Roll twice, uh, for ones. It is now Shay's turn. You uh, can stand, but you can't really move more than just like a couple feet in any given direction. Okay. Well, um, yeah. I'll just... And you have really long arrow shafts sticking out of you. Yeah. It's very decorative. I'm sure I've got more. <laughs> very feng shui. I'm just going to Eldritch Blast uh, one of those arches. On the south or on the north? Or on the west? Uh, the south. Okay. One of them looks frothingly mad and, like, super singed. The other looks damaged. You can tell that one of them got hit harder than the other. Okay, I'll uh, I'll shoot him then. With both? Yeah. Okay. 20 to hit and a 17 to hit. Both hit. Light him up. That's 8 and 10 is uh, 18 damage. He explodes. Just like spins the gun. Well, and then my legs give out underneath me. <laughs> From what <butter. laughs> You should fall forward. Poof. Yeah. And push the arrows all the way through. Yeah. <laughs> Grim, you have no idea what's going on, but you have an arrow in like, I don't know if you sleep on your stomach or on your back or what, but you have an arrow in whatever side was up. It's like, it's sticking the blanket to me. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Ow! <laughs> Son of a bitch! Uh, I will attempt to stand. Uh, it takes half your movement. Uh huh. And which you were already down by ten because you got hit. So sure, nearest knoll. Uh, give me a perception check because you're literally just waking up. That's not the right die. Let's use this one. Fourteen. I will say that you stand up and you see the ones to the west first. And how far are they from you? About fifty feet. Sacred flame. Cool. He rolled very well. Damn it, because so did I. You still have a bonus action. You can cast a spell with it if need be. I don't know if you even have healing word, actually. I do. Is Shay, are you the one that's hurt the worstest? Um, okay-ish. Are you? You're okay-ish? Yeah. Madrax. I'm okay for now. Then um, I'm not going to heal anybody just yet. Oh, yeah, I read Madrax's health is Shay's health, and I was like, how do you have anything left? But never mind, you're good. <laughs> Madrax? Let's see um, hmm. so if I move 10 feet up, that's my, or I have, I've been shot with one arrow, so I have 20 feet of movement. It lasts until the end of your next turn. Were you hit in the previous turn? You were not. So you are... No, I wasn't, so I pull my, full move. Yeah. All right, so I want to move up to within five feet of the first one to the south. Oh, wait, how many to the south are there? Two. I'm sorry, no, one one is dead. One is dead. Yeah, Shea blew yeah, one up. Shea, well, I mean, as much as it does. Oh, four, 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 four. 
I can't use Firebolt in non-lethal, right? No. No. <laughs> I really don't like magic being non-lethal, but if I like psychic, I can exp- I can deal with. Fair enough. It's ranged anyway. But there is that. That is true. I would I would definitely allow you to use shocking touch. Okay. Uh, at any point in time for non-lethal damage. So yeah, I have uh, I have thirty feet. I am within range. I'm gonna run up and shocking grasp, punch him in the face. Now this one is the one you only did like six damage to. <laughs> That's okay. Okay. I'm st- I'm still going non-lethal. I need one alive to bleed. Full on bug zapper lamp. I got a crit. All right. <laughs> Don't worry about rolling for damage. Just. Okay. <laughs> Because my thought that would of what would be funny would be if you just kind of like your head got wreathed in like electricity, your little frills came up, and you just headbutted him. Yeah, that's awesome. And just just poof, and he just falls, he just crumples, blip, straight to the ground. Oh hell yeah, that's good for me. Da, 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 da. Now the gnolls go. They see Grim stand up. And so one's gonna go for you. Ow, son of a! And oh he's shit! He's gonna roll above a twenty to hit you with his first shot. Oops. Um, second arrow misses. That is uh, only three damage. Um, second one is going to. He knows how damaged Shay is. It's going to try to try to put her down. Uh, Nineteen. Ah, that is nine damage. I want to roll high. Okay. It is Shay's turn. I'm going to Elrich blast uh, the other guy that was shooting at me okay. to the south. Okay. Fifteen to hit. Oh no! On the south, that guy crumpled. Uh, Major X took him out with the crit. Oh, okay. Uh, the only two left are the west. Then I can't see them. Uh, because I'm in the east. They are 60 feet away from you, so they'd be at the edge of your, your vision. If I'm not, in, uh, you know, applying a penalty for having to look across the fire for it. Okay, then I'll, uh, move, try to move north to the north side of the fire. Okay, you have, uh, I think you got hit with what, one arrow, so you have 20 feet of movement? Uh, I got hit with a lot of arrows. But only, only this last turn. But you, uh, Oh, yes. Okay. Can I see them now? Yeah, you could see them before as well. Okay. They were right at the, like, you have 60 feet of vision, so you could see, like, their, their shapes. Okay. Then no, I'll, uh, I'll blast one of them. 18 to hit. And an 8 to hit. Uh, the first one will hit. Yeah. For 6 damage. Alrighty. Grim. See. Uh, they are no closer to me? They have not moved. They've been firing their bows. Bastards. And if they hit you, then you're down 10 feet of movement. So, um, okay. I'm going to start by casting aid to give everybody, uh, a five hit point increase. What's the uh, range on that? 30 feet. What's the cast time? Just one action? Uh, one action. Duration, eight hours. I'm just making, yeah, because it's a prep spell. I just want to make sure it wasn't like a ten minute cast or something like that. Nope. Uh, it's a quickie. All right. So, uh, well, I'm sorry, what was the range again? 30 feet. Madrex. If you, if you move over just a little bit, you'll get Madrex in that. I will move enough to get everybody. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And then, uh, I want to use my bonus action to cast magic weapon. I'm sorry. I meant spiritual weapon. You can't. Why not? Because one of those isn't a cantrip. Oh, you're right. Bonus action, but still it's a full thing. Never mind. Yeah. yeah. So I'm done. Yeah. Yep, yep. Your action has to be a cantrip for you to do it. Yep, I'm done. At least until they come out with a bonus action cantrip. Bastards! Madrex, you hear heavy loping uh, as you're kind of like grinning over the um, the body of this fallen knoll that's like still sparking with electricity. And you look up just in time to see two knolls just sprinting incredibly fast at you from opposite ends of the... um. They're from the south, but from like kind of off the sides... And your first thought is, clever girl. And they come at you, and they leap at you with their their twin swords. They were actually sneaking up on you, from, running, rushing at you from the previous turn. So now this is their actual attack, getting getting close to you. 16 for the first one. That is the highest he rolls, which I believe hits you. So you take 5 damage, and the second one misses you with his swords. Wait, did... uh? Did I get healed last turn? I missed that. You got aid. <laughs> oh, okay. Cool, cool. You have the aids. Uh, no, it's, uh, so you have the five hit point maximum and your health goes up by the five to fill that. Alright. Uh, but you have two, two gnolls on you that look suspiciously like the, not, I mean, not the same gnoll, but they, you know, double short sword and all that. 
And those are all up on your on your on your business. Now it is your turn. Uh, both of them are on me. Yeah, and there's no one else around at the moment. Okay. Uh, I I assume they're on each side of me. Yeah, they basically came in a in a V from the other side of the mound. Um, so these gnolls have a special move that allows them to give like 90 feet. So they just on their last turn they just ran at you. Okay. Um, I am going to break away from one and take the opportunity attack. Okay. And then uh, reposition myself so that they're in a line. Natural one. Nice. All right. Uh, con save or deck save? Deck save. Nine for one, 17 for the other. Okay, so it's eight damage to the one that got nine and four damage to the one that got um, 17. All right. The two with bows. Is that, is that your turn? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's everything. The two with bows are going to attack. Um, oh, the first one's going to attack Grim and miss. The second one is going to attempt to put down Shay again. He rolls two 17s. I think that yeah, that'll, do. that'll do. You take 14 total damage. Oh, okay. But it's your turn. Yay. Yay. Um, yeah, I'm going for Elbridge Blast, another one. Okay, uh, one of them is wounded. No, I'll target him then. Yeah. So miss. 13 is your magic number. Okay, so one hits. 12 damage. Nice. You see him, like, kind of go into that same, like, f- like frenzied, like, wounded phase that you've seen the rest of them go into on damage. He looks, he looks pretty beat up. You, like, hit him in the side of the face with that, it, it looks like it ripped away a lot of flesh on his cheek. And, like, kind of put out his eye, maybe. Hard to tell from this range, but you think you think he messed him up pretty, pretty well. Awesome. Grim. Yes. I think Shay needs some healing. I wouldn't say no to that. I assumed you would not, and so... So, um... <laughs> it's his verbal component. <laughs> <laughs> How far away is Shay? From me. Got probably five feet. Okay. At this point. So I will uh, walk the five feet over and... Just shuffle. So I can reach you and cast Cure Wounds. And... That's 12 back. Thank you. And... That is my turn. Shay, as he... As he touches you... <laughs> you feel... um Like, you, his hand goes on you, but the hand feels... Bigger, almost like it has long, like, talons coming out of it, and it's cold as it grips into you really tight. And for a moment, you're like, what is Grim doing? And then you feel the healing surge, and then that all goes away. That was weird. It was weird. Grim, you are not at all aware of that. I mean, you're welcome. No, I'm just saying. I, I, I don't. Shay doesn't thank you, but just looks at you weirdly. <laughs> Grim's just got the normal creepy smile of Grim. <laughs> More like Grimace. Uh-huh. Yes. The grin, the grin is... That is major. Nope. Sorry. That is two angry gnolls with short swords. This round is potentially going to be a little rough on you, buddy. All right. Uh, first one, double short sword. Miss. Bites. Misses. Nothing rolled over six there. Second one, short swords. Double threes. Every time the uh, dice crash together, they roll very poorly. And a four for the bite. Complete whiff. Six attacks. Whiff. Uh, Madrax, it is your turn. See, I don't have much left. So, I have a question. Um, the di- disarm action, okay, it is a considered a special attack. What I am going to do is... <clears throat> fudgy McFudge Fudge. I'm just going to punch the more wounded one with Shocking Grasp. Okay. Fifteen? It does hit. <gasps> yes. Holy. Fourteen damage. Amazingly, you kill him. Yeah. You, like, punch right into it. Like, he kind of tries to dodge, and you kind of, like, grab out at him, and you just hit him right in, like, right over the heart, and there's just, like, a poof, <laughs> and you just see him kind of, like, pulse, and then he just drops, smoking from the mouth, the eyes, and the uh, the ears. Smooth. Yeah, that was literally exactly enough damage. There's still one on me? There's still one on you. Okay. Plus whatever else I continue to send at you. Wave after wave. 
Yeah, I got no bonus actions. That's it. The gnolls go. Alright, the wounded one is angry at Shay. Uh, that is a 15 and a 22. I agree, Mac. Yeah. Oh, max damage 10 and 5, so 15 total. How you looking? Okay. Um, not so, not so hot anymore. No. You're bloodied, I presume. Oh, yes. Are you super bloodied? Yes. Okay. The other one, I think, he seals, he sees Grim attacking you. Is he gonna, or uh, healing you? Nope. He's, he sees how wounded you are, and they yip back and forth at each other. And he rolls very terribly. His two arrows can, his indecision arrows just kind of like fly to either side of you. Alright. Uh, Shay. Um, how many gnolls are left? Uh, there are the two on the west side. You have not quite finished them off. And then there's one sword guy that you maybe actually don't know about on Majrax. Don't worry about me. I, I, I'll be fine. Okay. I'm going to, uh, Eldritch Blast both of them. Uh, smart move. You will probably kill the one if you hit him. So versus the wounded one? Yeah. I'm oh, sorry, just first. So that way. It's a, uh, 20 something. Yeah. Do you have Agonizing Blast? Do you add your charisma? Yes. Okay, you obliterate him. Okay. You put it like, he's like, la, like, like hyena, like, cause, and you just put it right through his throat, out the back of his skull. Nice. And the other one stops cackling and looks at you. Right as the Elsh Blast. Yeah. Hits it. Potentially. Oh, yes. Okay. So it's over 20. Now you're going to want to roll really high for damage on this one. Uh, 13? It's not bad. It's not bad. He is bloodied. He is looking frothy. Take it. Alright. Grin. I want to throw a sacred flame at the one that is recently bloodied. That's a deck save. Yeah, you got to stop doing that, man. I, I think I've rolled an 18 or better for every single one of your sacred flames. Son of a bitch! Yeah, I don't know. I have found that with my players, you, you want, normally you, you like to force saves because ten, they tend to, to do pretty well. These gnolls are a bastard. Versus me, you do not want, you want me to roll less. I think I want you to roll on a different die. I'm using several. Uh, bonus action, I'm gonna throw a healing word over at Shay. Okay. And that is for, ten. Oh wait, I'm sorry. Six. I use my uh I use my attack modifier, not my spell casting ability modifier the first time. <laughs> okay. It was much better, but not proper. Well thank you anyway. And now I'm done. Okay. Atta- uh the knoll on Majrax is going to try to stabberate. Oh, okay. Well those are both over twenty. That's he got a piece of it that time. Really got really got a hold of it. Uh thirteen total damage. From those two, as he slices right, left, and he's gonna come in and try to bite at your neck. That is a 17. That is going to do four more damage. And you are muted if you're crying. I am so thankful for that aid right now. Yeah. What are you at? Uh, I'm at 27. <laughs> uh, okay. Damage. Is your max 28? Yep. Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, 33 right now, but yeah. Wait, do you ca- you count up, I presume? Yeah, yeah, I count up. I'm sorry. No, I, I, that's how I interpreted it, but then I was like, wait. Just, just making sure. It's like, have I hit you way less than I think? Alright, uh, it is Majrax's turn. Do they get advantage if I grapple? I don't remember. I'm sorry, do they what? Like, would, do they get advantage on a grapple? They do not have, they do not have an ability that just automatically gives them advantage, no. No, I meant like, um, Shay and Grim, do they get advantage? But they don't. It does not say they get, get advantage. Okay, um, I'm just gonna continue to, uh, shocking grasp this, this one. Uh, 14. Uh, barely hits. Nice. At least it hits. Oh, 12 damage. Alright. You see, like, his eyes, like, flash. And he kind of like shakes and his uh, like froth comes out of his mouth and he lunges out and immediately bites at you, but misses. Snaps at the air. Whew. Yeah, I gotta be careful about bloodying them. That's my turn. Alright, that is um, the final archer null. Angry at Shay. 
10 and 11. Nope. He is then going to use his movement to run south. Uh, Shay. How far away is he? Like 50 feet. He was like 30 away from you, and then he ran south 30. So. Okay. I'll chase after him. And then um, I'm going to yell. Uh, don't you just want to uh, stop and rest at uh, the knoll? I'm uh, going to use suggestion. Suggestion. So it's a wisdom saving throw? Yes. DC? Uh, 15. Fail. So he just kind of like stops and sits down. Okay. So that was my action. They have to obey your act, your suggestion for eight hours? Is that how that works? Concentration, eight hours, yeah. yeah. When when else do they get saves? Only if something, like, does damage to them? Uh, I, I'm, I'm, okay, I'm okay. Well, it, it can... Uh, if the suggested activity can be completed in a shorter time, the spell ends when the subject finishes what it was asked to do. So theoretically, he's going for probably about an hour. Eh, I mean, if we count as a short, I mean, catching his breath in like 15, you probably have at least 10, 15 minutes, depending on how we'll interpret that. Yeah, that's fine. Because he's, he's catching his breath. Okay. <sighs> okay, Grim. One more archer, still? Uh, Just the one that Shay chased. I'm going to sacred flame him again. you got to roll poorly on one of these sons of bitches. Okay. Yep. Four damage. Did you roll all the dice? So don't forget it gets more powerful at level five. Uh, oh, look at that. No, I have to roll another one. All, ca- all cantrips do. Uh, another six. So a total of ten. You kill him. And then I want to throw a healing word over at Madrax. For five. Awesome. Thank you. And I'm done. Me too. And Shay flops over. Uh, as Madrax gets stabbed by... <laughs> no, you, uh, did you kill this other gnoll, or has he just not been damaged yet? The one I'm fighting? Yeah, no, he's, I think I erased how much health he had, and just didn't write his new health down. I did, uh, four acid and yeah. 14 lightning. Because he's frothing and bit you last time, I just, I never wrote the new number down when I rolled the dice. Alright, double sword sword... Uh, one of those will hit, and then he'll come in for a bite. That'll miss. Short sword, attempting to save his own life. Uh, max damage of eight. So the first one missed? He, the first one hit you, his second sword missed, and his bite missed. But he did, he did eight damage with, uh, the sword. The sword. Oh, okay. Does that put you down? No, thanks to that heal. Oh. Between the healing word and the aid, that's the only reason I'm alive right now. I thought that healing word went to, uh... Shay, I didn't realize he had healed you. I may not have been paying attention. That's fine. Uh, it is your turn. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna punch him. Let's see, er, uh, shocking grasp. Oh my god. I missed. Uh, yeah, 14 on these guys. So, you have the slightly better armor. Shay, you're, uh, flopped down on the ground. Would you like to give me a perception check with disadvantage? To see if you know there's still a battle going. Two. Oh, what a wonderful victory. Sure can't wait for Majrex to come back and celebrate with us. Oh, man. Out of curiosity, what was your <laughs> higher roll the two rolls? Eighteen. That's my bad. All right. Grim, you're kind of standing there looking around, plus you knew Majrex was fighting, so go ahead and give me a perception check just to... Twelve. You you are aware that Majrex is still fighting. All right. Uh, and how far away is Majrex from me? About 60 feet. Oh, a ways. Yeah, because he's been moving to the outside. All right, uh, I'm a sacred flame again. On his knoll. On his knoll. Okay. His pet knoll. What's your DC? 15. By one, you get him. Woo! And that would be nine damage. Dead. Oh, thank goodness. Bam! Yeah. No, he would have he fucked you up probably last next, next turn. <laughs> Funny, they actually rolled pretty well, pretty poorly for most of their attacks. Archers, pretty well, mostly. But these two could not, could not hit you. You are now out of combat, as far as you know. 
and you all kind of breathe heavily as the fire crackles and a log snaps in half and kind of falls into it. And a little fish just... As we will end our session tonight.